May had thought that she would need to throw some money at the problem to save her daughter. She hadn't dreamed that Samantha was the troublemaker in this situation, and she became furious at the news. Sam, don't you know what's good for you? She screamed. We've raised you for ten years, and you're repaying our kindness like this? How could you plot against your sister? Are you jealous of her? Are you trying to take out your competition? Well, say something. The police officers wore awkward looks as they wondered why the family was fighting so viciously. The true nature of the relationships within the family was a secret only known by others in the wealthy class. May wanted to hit Samantha, who had never learned how to fight. Samantha saw the slap coming, and she was just about to duck from May's swing when Zoe blocked it from behind. Zoe said fiercely, Mrs. Miller, you're disrespecting this city by starting a fight in a police station. The police officers overheard her and rushed over to stop May, but they stood watching instead of interfering in a private matter of social elites. You're scum, May said to Samantha. Unable to hit her, she continued cursing at her. You're a lowlife, just like your mistress mother. Zoe felt disgusted. She was from a traditional family, and though she had seen many people try to cheat one another, she had never seen a woman in her circle be this brazenly crude. Enough, Chris shouted, turning to look at Samantha, who was standing behind Zoe for cover. He glanced towards the interrogation room where Lily was locked up. He said decidedly, Officer, this is a family matter we would like to keep private. Please let me take my daughter home. The officer looked at Samantha for her approval. Both parties needed to be in agreement for him to release Lily. Chris shot her a threatening look. Sam, don't be spiteful, he said. It's your fault your sister did this. We're a family, but you need to listen to your father. You wouldn't want people saying Thomas's sister don't get along, would you? Chris often used his family to manipulate Samantha, but he knew that the most effective way to motivate her was by using Thomas. A look of repulsion washed over Zoe's face. She had gotten to know Samantha, and she thought she was a straightforward, honest person with a kind heart and a strong soul. She thought she had a good character. She hadn't realized the Millers were so nasty. It was clear to her why Samantha hadn't mentioned them much. Samantha looked at Chris and pursed her lips tightly. She didn't want to back down, but she was worried about Thomas. Speak up, Sam, May urged. They heard Lily laugh from the interrogation room. Like I said, you guys will let me go sooner or later, she said nonchalantly. Everyone thought Sam was about to give in, but she said... I'm not going to be bullied by you anymore. What? Lily screamed. What did you say? Are you crazy? Who do you think you are, Sam? Don't mess around, Chris said as he grabbed Samantha's arm. His teeth were gritted, and she could see the threat in his eyes. She knew that if she decided to stand her ground, he still had plenty of ways to force her to do what he wanted. Or what? She asked defiantly. They heard a deep, emotionless male voice and rabid footsteps coming toward them. Alexander appeared wearing a mask, and Jack was behind him. Samantha opened her mouth to speak, but she was too surprised to say anything. Zoe was puzzled. She had called Samantha's husband, and she couldn't understand why Alexander had come. She took out her phone and saw that she had called the right number. Her husband had sent one of his staff to give her his contact information so she could get in touch with him if he was needed urgently. Everyone knew that the man in the silver mask was always accompanied by Jack. It was Alexander's custom when he went out. Zoe had been afraid Samantha would need her husband's help, and she had called him to support her, but she hadn't expected to see Alexander. After Chris recovered from the shock of seeing his son-in-law appear out of nowhere... He forced a look of pleasant surprise onto his face. "'What brings you here, Alex?' he said ingratiatingly. "'Please, take a seat.' The officer standing near Chris was offended by his audacity. "'Mr. Miller, what are you doing? You're not in charge here. We are,' he said. May was the first to complain to Alexander. She cried and said, "'Look how cruel Sam is!' She deliberately plotted to let a woman ruin Lily and Brady's relationship. And now she's gotten Lily arrested and refuses to let her out. Mom, be quiet, Lily scolded. She knew her parents hadn't yet witnessed Alexander's cruelty. 
Alexander glanced at Chris and May with contempt and quickly walked to Samantha's side. He looked her up and down, and after making sure that she wasn't hurt, he hugged her tightly. To his onlookers, his hug looked restrained, but it felt to Samantha as if he wanted to melt her into his bones. Alex, she said, patting his back. He let go of her. His face was calm, and if Samantha hadn't felt his strong embrace and his fingers trembling as he held her, she wouldn't have known it was the same indifferent man she saw in front of her. If your daughter was foolish enough to fall for a trick, then she's stupid, he said to May, emphasizing the word stupid. Lily forcefully closed her eyes. She knew he was going to protect his wife. How can you say that? May asked indignantly. She wanted to keep pressing, but Chris stopped her. Shut up, he whispered, covering her mouth. He put on a smile and said, Lily is Sam's big sister. It's wrong for Sam to do this to her. You're right. Lily was foolish to let herself be tricked, but Sam was also wrong. She's a public figure now. If she makes a scene, everyone will look bad. Alexander held Samantha with one hand and casually played with her hair with the other. She pretended not to notice the crazy look in Chris's eyes. She looked down quietly. Out of the corner of her eye, she glanced over at Alexander, wondering how he would deal with the situation. Samantha had always been an independent person. She could count on one hand the times she'd had to rely on another to protect her. Why are you looking at me like that? Alexander asked sharply, noticing Samantha's cautious gaze. He touched her chin gently. So, what do you want to do? He asked her. Sam, listen to your father, Chris urged. He had spent most of his energy grooming Lily into marrying an elite family to increase the Miller's social status, and he could see that her reputation was in danger of being destroyed. He knew that an attempted murder charge was no small matter. If she had been after an ordinary person, he thought maybe she could have settled it with a little money. But she had been after Samantha, who had Alexander to back her. Samantha met Chris's eager, expectant stare. She looked at Alexander and asked, What do you think we should do? She was disgusted by the way her father was pretending to be loving. Alexander smiled faintly. Chris couldn't get a clear read on him, but he and May had just witnessed his coldness firsthand. Jack, Alexander said, and Jack immediately understood. If found guilty of attempting murder, she would certainly spend a long time in prison, Jack explained. It would likely be anything up to ten years. Lily heard Jack, and the little light left in her eyes went out. She sat down on the ground dejectedly. Before she heard that, she thought Alexander and Samantha might let her go. She shook her head with an anxious, uneasy feeling. She didn't want to go to jail. When she had attacked Samantha, she hadn't thought it would come to that. She thought the Millers and the Jacksons could protect her. May's face went pale. She restrained her hatred towards Samantha and Alexander's presence and begged, Please, Alex, it's my fault. I'm the one who taught Lily to do such crazy, impulsive things. She's still young. She can't go to jail. Still young? Alexander replied. She's an adult. Still young? He glanced at Samantha and continued. She started working when she was only 16. Samantha looked up, astonished that he knew that about her. If she had heard him say that previously, she would have thought he had investigated her out of suspicion. But his words reminded her of how her weak body had supported her ghostly life and the feelings of helplessness and sadness that weighed on her for years. She had felt like a child who fell down but wouldn't cry so no one could see their pain. The only time she would let herself cry was when someone else was in pain. In those days, she had felt as if she was perpetually on thin ice with the Millers. Remembering that time in her life, she gritted her teeth and swallowed back her sadness. Sam, say it was my fault, May said. I was narrow-minded and I was bad to you. Blame me. Don't blame Lily. May loved her daughter and she would do anything to save her. Samantha thought of her own mother. She remembered that her mother didn't like her much. During her most illogical moments, she had even suspected that Samantha wasn't her biological daughter. 
But Samantha knew if she wasn't her biological daughter, Thomas wouldn't love her so much and try so hard to protect her. Samantha didn't want to talk to May. She turned her face to look away from her and buried it in Alexander's arms, feeling that May's explanation wasn't enough to let it all go. Alexander chuckled. He was enjoying Samantha's affection, and he hugged her waist. With his other hand, he raised two slender fingers and held them aloft. There are two solutions, he said charitably. Chris, May, and Lily all looked at him eagerly, and Samantha attentively listened. Lily was going to stab Sam in the abdomen, so she can stab herself in the stomach now, and then we can forget about this. No, you can't hurt my daughter, May exclaimed, running over to protect Lily, who was trembling in fear. What's the second solution? Chris asked him carefully. He was afraid that if Lily suffered a stab wound, it could damage her womb and destroy her chances of marrying into an elite family. The second solution... Alexander said slowly, is for her to go to prison. No, 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 Chris shook his head repeatedly. He thought she would be better off being stabbed than having a criminal record. If she went to jail, she wouldn't be wanted by any husband. Chris continued to beg while May cried, and Lily sat in the interrogation room looking pale. Mommy? Daddy? Call Brady! Call the Jacksons! Lily cried out. Her former arrogance had faded into fear. Yes, May agreed. Tell them to come down here and negotiate a proper punishment. The Jacksons were Alexander's family. They had more pull than the Millers, even if they didn't care about their relationship with them as much anymore. Chris called them. Samantha looked at the Millers strangely. She wondered if it wasn't a slap in the Jacksons' face to call Brady. She didn't think Lily could sink any lower with them. She looked at Alexander as he casually leaned against the table. He tugged on his mask with a cold, knowing expression underneath it, as if he had known the Millers would ask him to call Brady. Lily's eyes were like weapons shooting at Alexander from the interrogation room. She laughed at herself after a while, as if she were mocking herself for threatening him. Alex, do do you want to leave before they get here? Samantha asked softly. Lily might tell them you're not disfigured. Samantha thought if Lily did tell, the Jacksons might force him to take off his mask in front of them. She's keeping my secret, he replied. Samantha was stunned for a moment. When she had seen Alexander wearing his mask, a part of her realized that his secret was being protected. Lily had always been proud, and Samantha knew she wouldn't want anyone to know that the Alexander that she had abandoned was not hideously disfigured, but a handsome man. No matter what, I'll stand by you, she promised. Alexander was amazed by Samantha's loyalty. He laughed, pinched her cheek, and said, Just wait, the show's about to begin. He wasn't afraid Lily would spill his secret because he was confident that she wouldn't dare to. He knew that she was afraid of him and didn't know how far he would go when he was angered. He also knew that without his approval, the Millers couldn't have reached out to the Jacksons in the first place. He wasn't planning on it being a call for help, but rather a call for humiliation. Eventually, they heard footsteps coming from outside the door. You're finally here, Chris said happily when Brady walked in. Sam is pushing her weight around, and she wants to hurt your fiancé, May cried. Lily is being wronged. She stopped halfway through her sentence when she and Chris saw the beautiful woman following behind Brady. He pulled out a chair for her to sit down, and Chris and May thought that this didn't bode well for their daughter. Who's this? Chris asked curiously. Lily's insults rang out from the interrogation room. Brady, you jerk! How could you bring that shameless woman here? Isabel was frightened and took a step back. Brady quickly comforted her and whispered in her ear, Don't be afraid, Izzy. I'm here. She relaxed, leaning on his arm. When Brady received the phone call asking for him to go to the police station, he had been with Isabel as she was finishing her exam. When she had heard the call was about the Millers, she had wanted to go with him. Brady liked her, and Lorraine valued the grandchild Isabel was carrying, so he brought her along. 
Her intention was to make Lily mad and to further widen the gap between Lily and Brady. Why are you here, Alex? Brady asked as Alexander sat down casually beside him. Wearing his silver mask, he was as arrogant as he was in his own territory, no matter where he happened to be. Samantha was standing next to him, and he played with her hand as he held it in his. Samantha looked at Alexander. She could see that he didn't have any intention of talking to Brady, so she ignored him too. He made her feel sick, and she didn't have anything left to say to him. Brady stiffened. He looked at Lily, his eyes flashing with disgust. He was too indifferent to talk to her, so he spoke to Chris instead. What do you want from me? He asked him. Chris was so angry that he lost his composure and pointed to Isabel, asking, Who is that? She's my friend, Brady answered. The Jacksons weren't ready to reveal her connection to them yet. Friend, Lily sneered. What kind of friend do you go to bed with? What kind of friend gets pregnant with your child? What kind of friend do you give your credit cards to? You have a lot of nerve using the word friend. Brady's polite hypocrisy and Lily's craziness made Samantha sigh. When she and Brady had been together, he had told her that he and Lily were just friends, and he gave her his credit card to go shopping. You hussy, May shouted at Isabel. If Brady hadn't been there, she would have slapped her. I am not, Isabel retorted, looking to Brady for help. It was an accident, I can explain, Brady said, clearly unwilling to apologize. He held up his hand to protect Isabel. Chris's face turned white with anger. He staggered backward and glared at Brady in disbelief. His finger trembled as he pointed at Isabel and Brady. You, 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 he said, but he didn't know how to finish. Why am I here? Brady asked impatiently. Let's get on with this. Samantha looked over and met Isabel's eyes for a moment, but Isabel looked away quickly as though she didn't know who Samantha was. At the Road to the Top modeling competition, Isabel had acted dim-witted. Samantha wondered if the pregnancy had made her smarter, but she figured it only had served to move her closer to the top of the social ladder. It's like this. Lily and Sam had some misunderstandings, May started. She told Brady her version of why Lily was locked up, but what she said wasn't the full truth. She told him Lily just wanted to scare Samantha because she was angry, rather than that she wanted deliberately to hurt her. And she said that the sisters had had some private conflicts previously. She said Samantha had been wrong and had forced Lily into a rage, prompting her to be impulsive. Zoe rolled her eyes. She was amazed by her ability to bend the truth. It was clear to her that Samantha had suffered greatly with the Millers. Zoe could understand how her attitude towards them was one of indifference. She tried to stab Sam in public in front of lots of people, Brady said with a thinly veiled smile. How can I fix this? If he had known that they had brought him here to clean up such a big mess, he would have laughed at them. He wouldn't have gone at all. Alexander had rushed to the police station to back Samantha, and Brady knew if he stepped too far out of line, he would be challenging Alexander. Chris pulled Brady to the side and whispered, Brady, she's your fiancé, and you and Alexander are family. You could talk some sense into him. Brady thought his difficult relationship with Alexander was clear, and he was tired of dealing with the Millers. Ah! Isabel screamed. Brady rushed over to her where she was lying on the ground, clutching her stomach in pain. Brady, my stomach hurts, she howled. Save me! Save our child! She reached out her hand for him. What happened? Brady demanded furiously. He stared at May, who was standing beside her. May acted helpless. I... I don't know, she stammered. I just... just touched her. I didn't use any force at all. Lily said that I seduced you, Isabel said, crying in pain. Mrs. Miller... Brady, my stomach hurts. Brady carried Isabel out of the room. Before he left, he said, The child in Isabel's womb is a child of the Jackson family. Since you can't handle it, I'm calling off the marriage. Brady! Chris shouted after him, stunned. They were already engaged, and it was common knowledge among the wealthy elite of Springfield. 
May's body trembled with anger. She had suspected that Isabel was Brady's mistress, but she didn't know she was pregnant with this child. She understood why her daughter was so angry. Lily shouted from behind the bars, Brady, she's using you! Sam sent her to seduce you! She deliberately sabotaged our relationship! Don't be a fool! Albert had told Lily all about Samantha's plan, but she couldn't tell Brady the source of her information because she didn't want people to know about her connection with Albert. She was too embarrassed by it. Samantha's heart was pounding, but she hid her anxiety. Isabel grabbed Brady's shirt and said weakly, I don't even really know Mrs. Brown. We only met a few times in the road to the top competition, and we didn't get along. Samantha heaved a sigh of relief. It seemed to her that Isabel was being sensible. Brady remembered that he had first met Isabel when he had taken Lily to the road to the top competition. At the time, Samantha didn't have a good relationship with any of the other models. Lily, you're delusional, Brady said with a look of disgust. I was blind before to think you were a kind and considerate person. Then he left, carrying Isabel in his arms. Chris and May's faces looked gray with shock and fear. Lily wondered how everything had gone so wrong. She knew she was good at playing games, and she was baffled at how she could have ended up in such a sorry state. Zoe saw Samantha staring blankly, so she teased in a low voice. I bet you've never seen acting like that before. The two women had seen that May hadn't pushed Isabel. She had only touched her, but Isabel had fallen to the ground as if May had pushed her. Samantha came back to her senses and sighed. I've seen things like that on television before, but it's the first time I've seen it in real life. Pretty cool, she said. Alex, please, I beg you. I only have this one precious daughter, May said, kneeling with her hands clasped. She grabbed at the bottom of his pants and pleaded. Please let her go. Alexander kicked her away. Don't touch me, he said looking at his pants as though she had soiled them. He looked at Samantha unhappily. The others were confused. They didn't understand why he would be mad at Samantha, but Samantha understood. He didn't like May dirtying his pants, and the reason they had been dirtied was that he had gone to help her. Samantha pretended not to understand what he meant. Lily knelt by the bars and looked up at Alexander's silver mask. Alex, I don't want to go to jail. If you keep me out of there, I'll keep your secret for you. It's a good deal. She didn't know what else to do. He laughed lightly and said, You've already told people. How, how did you know? Lily fell to the ground in fear. She had only told Albert, and she thought it was impossible that he would have told Alexander. She wondered how he could have known that she had told. I'll give you five minutes to make a decision he said, looking at his watch. Everyone there understood that if Lily didn't stab herself within five minutes, she would go to jail. They were also aware that powerful people like Alexander had many ways to make life in prison worse than death. Lily, just... But Chris couldn't finish telling his daughter to hurt herself. Officer, don't you care? He's threatening her, May cried. A few police officers were eyeing each other, they weren't sure if they should interfere in this family's matter. They knew that even if it didn't happen here, the outcome would probably be the same after they left, and they felt it might be better to mind their own business. I'll stab myself, Lily finally agreed. Give me a knife. There was a pocket knife on the table. Alexander picked it up, and with a flick of the wrist, the knife flew toward Lily. She screamed and moved out of the way. The knife flew through the gap in the bars, brushed against the ground, and stopped right beside her hand. His aim was accurate, steady, and ruthless, even while he was undisciplined and somewhat dispirited. Lily held the knife with both hands and trembled as she closed her eyes in despair. She steeled her heart and finally stabbed her abdomen. The cold blade pierced her flesh and the intense pain was unbearable. Screams of misery reverberated and blood splattered. Chris and May felt their hot blood on their faces, which were stained red. Mommy, I'm in pain! It hurts! She screamed. She curled up on the ground. Blood continued to flow until her white shirt skirt was dyed a deep red. 
Lily, my treasure, don't worry. Mommy will call you an ambulance, May said. She took out her phone but found that there was no signal in the building. There had been a signal before, and she couldn't understand why it had gone. Something occurred to her, and she looked at Alexander in horror. Alex, why can't I make a call? Alexander sat down and crossed his legs. He glanced at her, emotionless. He had expected her reaction. He had sent a message to Eric to block the signal in the police station. Without his permission, no one could make a call. Alex, you can't go back on your word, Chris said anxiously. You said you would let my daughter go if she stabbed herself. He didn't want to let the daughter he had so carefully nurtured die. He wouldn't reap any benefits from his sacrifice. If you want to save her, there is one other condition, Alexander said slowly. What? Chris asked. From now on, Lily is your only daughter, he continued. The Miller family will sever all ties with Sam. From now on, you'll have nothing to do with her. Samantha looked at him in shock. Isn't that what you want? He asked her. Yes, she said, nodding. That's what I want, Alex. Samantha had always wanted to sever ties with the Millers, but she hadn't had the ability or the opportunity. It felt like a fair trade to spare Lily from going to prison as repayment for the little bit of nurturing they had given her over the ten years they had raised her. After a few moments, the smile faded from her face. She didn't want to sever ties with Thomas. She didn't want them to be kept apart. Call your little brother. Alexander suggested as he picked up the police station phone and arranged for Eric to enable the cell phone coverage. Okay, she replied joyously. She was so happy she wanted to kiss Alexander. She walked away and dialed Thomas's number. It rang several times before he answered. Sam, what's up? He asked in a low voice. She thought for a minute and then asked, Are you in class? He had left his class to answer the phone. Samantha suddenly felt hesitant to tell him what had happened. She didn't know what Thomas would think or what he would decide. I'm planning to cut off all relations with the Millers, she said. Did they agree to it? He asked. He couldn't believe they would. Yes, your brother-in-law said he would help me. Do you want to come with me, or do you still want to be a part of their family? I don't have a stable income right now, and I'm not too sure about my future with Alex. I might not always be Mrs. Brown. If you want to stay with the Millers, I'll understand. Thomas was speechless for a moment. Holding back his tears, he said, You don't want me anymore? What? She asked incredulously. Before she could say anything else, he interrupted her. I don't want to stay with them. I want to go with you. You can't abandon me. You're my only family. I don't care about the social status of the Millers, and I don't need you to support me. I can support you. If you want to divorce Alexander, then do it. I don't care about him. His voice cracked as he finished speaking, and he sounded like he might cry. Hey, of course I still want to be with you. You're my brother, she said comfortingly. I just wanted to give you the choice. If you want to, I would love for you to come with me. Okay, yes, he said excitedly. Thomas had already considered the matter before, but he was slow to act. Before he had had a chance to develop feelings for the Millers, they had already broken his heart, so he had never had any real feelings for them. On hearing Thomas's answer, Samantha felt relieved, and she smiled. But when she turned around, she froze. She hadn't realized that Alexander was standing behind her. His handsome face looked like the beginning of a storm. Samantha looked to Jack for help, but he stood at Alexander's side with his head lowered. He didn't want to get involved in a dispute between his boss and his wife. So you want to divorce me? He asked, taking a long step toward her. I helped you and Thomas, and he thinks you should divorce me too. She could see that he was furious. She took a step back, and he took a step forward. They continued like that until her heel hit a nearby desk. Her upper body continued to move backward. 
He held her waist with one hand and her chin with the other. Did Milan's food make you fat? He asked cruelly. Zoe had been watching the couple. She thought, this has nothing to do with Milan's food. She was surprised that Samantha was so cowardly with Alexander. Alex, don't be angry, she said cautiously. She didn't think she would be able to stay with him for much longer. He was angry like he had never been before. He picked up his coat and walked out. Jack, clean up this mess, he said over his shoulder. Sure thing, he called back. Alex, Samantha shouted, wanting to chase after him. Don't follow me, he said from outside the room. The ambulance arrived and May went with her daughter. Jack escorted Chris to officially separate Samantha's family name from the Millers. He drew up a contract that would protect her reputation. So he said to Samantha, Alex has a strange personality, just like the rumors say. He's the handsome man who came with you to see me, isn't he? She could tell Alexander was not someone who could be bullied. He's like a vicious wolf, she thought. Zoe, please, Samantha began. She hadn't expected her to figure out his identity. Don't worry, I won't say anything, Zoe said reassuringly as she patted Samantha's shoulder. As they left the police station, Samantha stopped in her tracks when she saw Alexander leaning on his car, waiting for her. I'm not going to be bullied by him, she decided, feeling wronged and angry. Alex, I've heard so much about you, Zoe said, greeting him openly. Alexander's gaze shifted from Samantha to Zoe. Miss Jacobs, don't you think your company should ensure your employees have ample security guards and bodyguards if necessary? This can't be blamed on the company, Samantha explained on Zoe's behalf. This problem with Lily has to do with my personal life. I'm not famous enough to warrant having bodyguards. Mrs. Brown isn't worth having bodyguards, he snapped. Sam, do you know how many people might want to kidnap you? His anger had yet to subside, and he couldn't believe she had spoken up for Zoe. The one who might be kidnapped is your wife, Mrs. Brown. Not me, Sam, Samantha shouted. She thought if someone kidnapped her, it would be because of her connection to Alexander, rather than because of her modeling career. As soon as she had finished speaking, she felt her words had been too strong. His anger had ignited her own temper. Zoe was upset and wanted to say something to Samantha, but she decided to hold back. Our company is responsible for today's problem, she said reluctantly. I will arrange for Sam to have assistants and bodyguards. I'll take care of it personally. Will that work? Alexander nodded his head and turned his gaze back to Samantha. He was waiting for her to speak, but she sulked and looked away, making a point of ignoring him. Mrs. Brown, you were talking about divorce. Of course Mr. Brown is angry, Jack said, sighing helplessly. He took his job seriously and was genuinely worried about his boss's feelings. Samantha pursed her lips. She knew that it was her fault that Alexander was upset, but she was also angry at him for being unreasonable. Jack could tell what she was thinking about and said, Mrs. Brown, I know that sometimes Mr. Brown has a bad temper, and he often oversteps the mark. Jim even admitted to me once that he thinks Mr. Brown acts like a child. But you've got to bear with it. You're more mature and understanding, and you can be the bigger person. Try to make peace with him. So he raised her eyebrows and said to Samantha, Jack seems to be quite the dedicated assistant. I'm sure he'll help you to patch things up in no time. Jack pretended not to hear the sarcasm in her voice. He smiled shamelessly and said, Miss Jacobs, you flatter me. Chris, who wasn't far away, was shocked when he overheard them talking. He heard what Jack had said about Samantha and couldn't believe that he considered her so mature. He hadn't ever really seen his daughter for who she was. He was regretful because he felt as though he had put his money on the wrong daughter. He had always thought that Lily would become the star and didn't expect her to fail. Samantha, whom he'd always thought of as second best, was the one who was making a name for herself. He felt that he had made a big mistake, and because of it, he had lost everything. 
Jack took Chris with him to do some work and arranged for a driver and some bodyguards to take Samantha away. Before she left, Samantha turned to Zoe and said apologetically, I should have told you that my husband has quite a bad temper. I'm sorry if he offended you just now. It's all right, Zoe said, waving her hand. From the moment she had found out Alexander's true identity, she had understood. She had heard about his infamous bad temper. How many of these spoiled rich kids don't have bad tempers, she thought. They all think they have the right to boss the whole world around. Sam, you and Alexander, she started to say. What's wrong? Samantha asked, with a concerned look on her face. Zoe wanted to say something, but stopped herself. Forget it she finally said. You just need to protect yourself. You can always come to me if you're in trouble, and I'll arrange for you to have some assistance and bodyguards as soon as possible. Okay, thank you, Zoe, Samantha replied. She had the feeling that Zoe had something more to say, but was holding back. After settling some matters, Jack returned to Alexander's side and told him what he had found out. Mr. Brown, he said, your wife's manager's family name is Jacobs, right? It seems that she has had some connection with Susie Adams' family. In fact, she was engaged at one time to Susie's oldest brother. After Zoe had become Samantha's manager, Alexander ordered Jack to investigate her. Jack could tell that her background was complicated, so he hadn't found any information right away. But he saw her once driving a luxury car, and he had been able to use it as a clue to find out more about her and her family. Alexander didn't respond. His lips were tightly pursed, and he was in a bad mood. If he had known Zoe's identity from the start, he wouldn't have let Samantha work for her. He didn't want her to have such a powerful manager, because it would take away his control over her. Jack continued, Apparently Miss Jacobs called off the engagement with Susie's older brother last year. It's not clear why. But she had contact with Susie's family prior to that, and it seems that the two families have always had a strong relationship. He looked at Alexander with a worrisome expression and said, What if Miss Jacobs tells Mrs. Brown about what happened between you and Miss Adams? Alexander opened his eyes wide and asked, What do you mean? What happened between us? Oh, nothing, Jack said, shaking his head. Everyone knows that he's in love with her he thought, even though the two of them have never officially been in a relationship. Before Alexander had married Samantha, everyone who was close to him thought that his true love was Susie. Susie must have rejected him, Jack guessed. Otherwise, he would have married her. I just wonder what would happen if Mrs. Brown ever found out. Alexander's relationship with Samantha was completely different from his relationship with Susie. It seemed to Jack as though he always favored Susie, and when she was involved, he had a gentle disposition, whereas he always seemed angry and impatient with Mrs. Brown. However, Jack thought, with Mrs. Brown, he seems to be truly alive for the first time. When she returned to Rock Hill Manor, the first thing that Samantha did was start cooking dinner, but by seven o'clock in the evening, Alexander still hadn't returned. She packed it up into a lunchbox and got ready to leave. As she stepped outside, Jack just happened to be driving by. He slowed down when he saw her coming out of the house, and then he stopped the car in front of her and rolled down the window. Mrs. Brown, do you need a ride somewhere? He asked. She was holding the lunchbox in her hands that she used to deliver meals to Alexander. It was obvious to Jack what she wanted to do. The back window was closed, and because it was tinted, Samantha couldn't see inside. But she could see into the back of the car through Jack's open window. Alexander was in the back seat, leaning back with his eyes closed, pretending to sleep. Jack saw her looking at Alexander and moved to the side slightly to block her view. He turned his eyes away from her, trying to hide a smile. It's time for dinner. Since Alex is throwing a tantrum, I packed his food up. I wouldn't want anyone to say I'm deliberately starving him, she said sarcastically, in a voice loud enough for Alexander to hear. Jack raised his eyebrows in surprise. She's got some guts going after Mr. Brown like that, he thought. He quickly lowered his eyes and pursed his lips, holding back his laughter so that his boss wouldn't see. Mr. Brown, 
Jack said when he noticed movement behind him. Alexander had opened his eyes and was slouching lazily. He pressed the button to roll down his window, revealing his handsome but stone-cold face. He looked at Samantha without emotion and said, What did you just say? Could you repeat that? Oh, you're awake. Well, I was saying that if you don't wake up soon, your food will be cold. She replied with a smile, acting like she didn't know what he was talking about. She knew that he had just been pretending to sleep. Alexander didn't feel any less upset, but when he saw her smiling face, he found that he couldn't get angry with her. He got out of the car, slamming the door behind him. Mrs. Brown, that looks heavy. Why don't you let me help you carry it? Jack said politely, taking the lunchbox from her. Alexander went to the dining room table and sat down to eat, so Samantha served the food and sat down with them. She wasn't very hungry and didn't eat much. After she had finished her meal, she waited for him. She watched him eat with curiosity. It was clear to her that he had been taught proper dining etiquette when he was a child. From the way that he held his knife and fork to the way that he cut his food into tiny pieces, every movement was graceful and refined. Alex, she said after he had finished eating. He didn't look at her. Instead, he gestured to the housekeepers to clean up the dining table. Samantha could tell that he was listening, so she started talking. She said, You know, Thomas didn't know you before, and because of the way that he found out about our marriage, he might have some misunderstandings about you. It's true that he doesn't like you, but that doesn't mean he has any bad intentions. She wanted to explain why Thomas had been talking to her about divorce on the phone. Alexander folded his hands on the table and looked at her. What about you? He asked in a quiet but firm voice. She paused and thought about what to say. Do you want to hear the truth? She asked. Tell me, he said. She placed her hands on her lap and looked out the window at an old oak tree that was just outside. The leaves were all different shades of orange, yellow, and red. As she watched the leaves move in the wind, a peaceful sensation swept through her. She knew what he wanted to know. He wanted her to tell him how she felt about him. Alexander, she said slowly, calling him by his full name to sound more serious. Do you remember when you asked me what I wanted in this marriage? She was still looking out of the window as she spoke. He narrowed his eyes as he thought back. He had actually forgotten about it. I want respect, she said resolutely. I want you to respect me as your wife. Then she explained. You see, Thomas and I were never loved growing up, or even accepted as part of the family. Chris and Lily always looked down on us and treated us as second best. I didn't know that she felt like an outsider in her own family, he thought. I can relate to that. We have that in common. She sighed and continued talking. Some say that a marriage without love is like being in prison, and I believe that people change, and so do relationships. Separation and remarriage are normal. Moving her eyes to Alexander, she said in a serious tone, Alex, if you don't abandon me, I'll stay with you. But know that we're both changing every day, and there's always the possibility that one day we'll go our separate ways. As she spoke, Alexander's hands tightened. He looked down at the table and silently thought about everything she was saying. As the night went on, Alexander became increasingly angry. He could feel every word she had said after dinner burning a hole in his heart. He understood what she had meant, but he also felt that there was something more to her words. He didn't know why, but he had an uneasy feeling about it. He was five years older than she was, but he thought that she was very wise for her age, and he resented it. She was so intelligent and mature that he felt as though he would lose the control he had over her, and he didn't like having things in his life that he couldn't control. He rolled over in bed and started kissing her. He wanted to feel once more that he had power over her. Sam, do you love me? He asked as he kissed her. He moved his body onto hers, and his movements became more passionate and also more aggressive. She looked at him intensely, but she didn't answer his question. 
He asked her again, Do you love me? Say it. Say you love me. She frowned at him as she started breathing heavily. Her nails dug into the muscles of his back, but she still didn't answer. He knew what it meant if she didn't answer him. She didn't love him. The thought infuriated him, and all of the anger and hurt that he was feeling came out through his body. The past few months of their relationship flashed through his mind, and he saw countless scenes play out in front of his eyes. In every one, he saw her smile, her frown, her laughter, or her look of concern. It made him think of his childhood, and of Susie. Sam, Alexander said, kissing her all over her face, her lips, and her neck. You're not allowed to leave me. Do you hear me? You can never leave. His voice was calm, but it carried with it a tone of desperation. Samantha didn't know how Jack had done it, but a few days later, everyone in their circle and in the fashion world knew that she and her family had legally separated, and they knew it was Samantha who had initiated it. For a while, it was all everyone was talking about. They all knew that the Miller family hadn't made the decision because it wouldn't have been in their best interest to cut off their connections with Alexander and the Brown family. And the only other possibility was that Lorraine had wanted to start a fight with Alexander about her inheritance. But then, the Jackson family came forward to say that the engagement between Brady and Lily was cancelled. Everyone quickly started gossiping about that. They couldn't understand why the Miller family would agree to cancel the engagement. People who didn't like Lily soon posted comments about their engagement on social media. Well, after many twists and turns, they finally ended it. I thought it ended ages ago. Mia hasn't said anything. Didn't she used to be besties with Lily? Rumor has it that the engagement was called off because Brady was cheating on her and got the other woman pregnant. Brady, you scumbag. Soon, people started posting pictures of Brady flirting with another woman. Comments started pouring in about what a horrible person he was. Then, some photos of him accompanying a woman to a maternity store leaked on social media. He was a laughing stock. His image was badly damaged, and his family was humiliated. They tried everything they could to control the public scandal, but failed. They couldn't silence it at its source because there were just too many people involved. Lily woke up from the anesthesia and looked at the ceiling with a blank expression. Her face was ashen. May had been looking after her daughter for three days. During that time, she had slept less than ten hours. She tried all kinds of things to comfort Lily. She cursed everyone that had gone against her, like Alexander and Samantha. She told her that Brady was nothing but garbage and that she would meet a better man. But it seemed as though nothing she could say or do would cheer her up. Mom, give me my phone, Lily finally said. It was the first thing she had said since the surgery. Why do you want your phone? May asked doubtfully as she handed it to her. She didn't respond, but opened the case and started dialing. After a while, someone answered. Albert, it's me. Okay. All right, Lily said flatly. Then she listened for a while before saying goodbye. May was shocked that she had called Albert by his first name. When Lily hung up the phone, May anxiously held her daughter's hand and said, Lily, don't do anything stupid. Albert isn't a good person. Mom, my life is ruined, Lily said, her eyes full of despair. Only Albert can avenge me. Zoe quickly selected a few candidates to be Samantha's assistant. It was down to three women and one man. Samantha eliminated the male candidate right away. Are you afraid that your husband will be jealous? Zoe asked with a smile. Samantha held her hands up and said, I think it's better to avoid unnecessary trouble, don't you think? She also felt like it would be more convenient to have an assistant of the same gender. Of the three female candidates, two of them were quite tall, almost as tall as Samantha. The third was a shorter woman who looked quite young. Samantha liked her the best. She had big, bright eyes, and Samantha thought she looked beautiful. With her looks, she could be a famous actress, she thought. When they were interviewing her, she looked at Samantha with eager eyes, smiling like a porcelain doll. How old are you? 
Samantha asked. I'm not as young as I look, she answered with a nervous smile. Then she quickly added, I'm your biggest fan, and I may be young, but I'm really a good worker. I'll be the best assistant you've ever had, I promise. She was getting defensive because she had the feeling that they weren't going to give her the position. By the way, my name's Missy, she said, holding out her hand. Samantha was speechless. After she shook her hand, she looked at Zoe and whispered to her, What's going on? Are we really going to hire a groupie? Zoe shrugged her shoulders. She had no idea that Missy was such a big fan. Samantha thought it might not be a bad idea to have an avid fan for an assistant. She would definitely take good care of me, she thought. She looked again at the information of all three candidates. Missy had been the most relevant experience out of all of them. Despite her young age, she had worked as a makeup artist in the past, and she seemed quite skilled. The other two also had advantages. They were both a little older than Samantha and appeared to have more stable lives. Also, Samantha thought, although it's not important, when they stand beside me, our height difference isn't so noticeable. Missy looks tiny beside me. Samantha and Zoe went to the side to discuss who they thought would be the best candidate. When they came back to announce their decision, they were surprised to see that the other two candidates had left. Missy stood up straight and smiled, revealing dimples in her cheeks that Samantha found adorable. When they told her that she had the position, she said, Thank you, Samantha. I can't wait to start. Neither Samantha nor Zoe knew what to say. Finally, Samantha said, Please, if we're going to work together, you can call me Sam. Missy signed the contract, beside herself with joy. Zoe gave her an instruction manual to read through at home before starting work. She informed her that as soon as Samantha had a job lined up, she would call her. After the three of them exchanged contact information, Missy jumped up happily, clapping her hands. Zoe pinched the bridge of her nose. She wasn't sure if it was a good idea to hire her. People who chase celebrities aren't always right in the head, she thought. See you soon, Sam, Missy said as she turned around to leave. But before she walked away, she remembered that there was something important she had wanted to say. By the way, I follow you on social media. My profile name is Melissa Keaton. Look me up. Then she gave Samantha a kiss on the cheek and left. Samantha had a shocked look on her face. Sam, what's wrong? Zoe asked. I noticed a fan named Melissa Keaton on my page before, and if I remember correctly, she had a double degree in media and economics. Zoe was silent for a moment. She hadn't expected that they would be able to hire such an educated assistant. Let's try her out first, she said. If there are any problems, we can decide what to do about it later. She must be incredibly intelligent if she already has two university degrees at such a young age. Okay, Samantha agreed. If Missy is so young and talented, she thought, why does she want to be my assistant? Does she just want to be with a celebrity? She was feeling a little uncertain about their decision and hoped that Missy would change her mind about the job. Oh, I've also found you a bodyguard, Zoe said. Do you still remember Tara Wilson, the woman that saved you? I've decided to hire her. She has a lot of experience in the field and is very skilled. Most importantly, she's a woman. Samantha knew that she had made the decision because of Alexander. Jack came into the office with some big news. It seemed that Alexander's cousin from France had secretly traveled to America alone. Mr. Brown, we've located Miss Mitchell, he said. She's now living in Springfield and has rented an apartment here, but she's not willing to come with the bodyguards. She said that she has a job now and needs to work. Jack couldn't believe the last few words had come out of his mouth. I've seen her before, he thought. She's like a little princess and has been pampered since she was young. How could she possibly have a job? Tie her up and send her back where she came from, Alexander ordered. As soon as he had finished speaking, Jack's phone rang. Speak of the devil, he said. Mr. Brown, it's your cousin, Miss Mitchell. Give it to me, Alexander said. He took Jack's phone and muttered, Hello? His cousin was silent for a moment. She recognized his voice. Alex? 
she said cautiously. Valerie, I'm going to give you two choices. I can either send someone to make your life difficult, or I can have someone send you back to France. Oh, don't be like that, she said. She wasn't in the mood to argue with them. I'm not here to play around. I found myself a job. I'm going to work with my hero. Jack, ask the people you've got over there to take her home. Alexander said when he finally understood. She's just here to chase a celebrity, he thought. Realizing that Alexander was about to hang up the phone, his cousin quickly said, Don't hang up, Alex. I'm also here to meet your wife. We've never met before. I want to see what kind of woman could possibly replace Susie. Alexander frowned slightly. It was true that his mother's relatives had never seen Samantha before. And although his last name was Brown, he still had a lot of feelings for his relatives on his mother's side. Oh, by the way, Alex, my name is Missy now, she said. Missy's father was Alexander's uncle on his mother's side. His uncle had helped Alexander out a lot when he had been young. Missy had followed Alexander, and because of his mother, he had taken good care of her. He decided that he couldn't argue with her. If she wants to see Sam, he thought, so be it. Anyway, it doesn't matter to me what she thinks. Back at Rock Hill Manor, Samantha told Alexander about the assistant and bodyguard that they had hired. He was, after all, the one who had told Zoe to hire them. Are they men or women? He asked. It was the first question that came out of his mouth. You'll be happy to know that they are both women, Samantha said, rolling her eyes. Just as I expected, she thought. I can't believe how jealous he is. He seemed satisfied, but quickly changed the topic. Someone will be coming to the house in a few days, but you don't have to worry about it. Why would he make a point of telling me not to worry about it, she thought. If he says it like that, of course I'm going to worry about it. Who is it? she asked. She's my cousin, he answered, without giving any more information. Samantha sat up straight and asked, What do you need me to do? Does she have any special food that she likes? I can prepare something for her in advance. She felt that, as his cook and his wife, she should make a special effort to entertain his family. Alexander didn't even look at her when he answered, I told you, don't worry about it. Even though he was acting very casually, Samantha was still a little nervous. Anyone that he would let into the manor so easily was anything but an ordinary guest. Missy and Tara officially started work. On their first day, although it was the first time they had ever met, it appeared as though the two of them had hit it off because they were both members of Samantha's fan page. However, Tara wasn't really a fan in the same sense as Missy. She had started following Samantha's fan page to increase her chances of getting the job. She had scrolled through Samantha's social media page and posted comments on posts going back years in the past, trying her best to look like she had been following her for some time. If she had known that she was going to meet a fan like Missy, she wouldn't have ever joined. On Samantha's schedule that day was an interview for a big show where she would be competing with many top models in the country. Missy was asked to do some light makeup for Samantha, and she did an excellent job. She had natural skills that were comparable to many professional makeup artists. Only models were allowed to enter the site where the interviews were being held, but Zoe had connections. She found some people that she knew inside and got everyone access. When the interview was over, Missy asked, Sam, are you really married? Tara didn't like to talk much, but Missy was the opposite. She was a little chatterbox. Samantha noticed that she had a bit of an accent when she spoke, but she couldn't tell where it was from. She spoke English very well, and although she was young and acted quite immature at times, she was also very talented and learned quickly. Samantha already thought of her a bit like a younger sister. Yes, that's right, Samantha said, nodding. Then she asked with a smile, Are you surprised? Missy said excitedly, no, I was just thinking, what kind of man could possibly be worthy of you? I don't believe that man exists. Tara thought, is she for real? I can't pretend to be that big a fan. Sam, you're just so beautiful. Your husband must be very handsome, and he must treat you like a queen. 
Missy said enthusiastically. Zoe glanced at her with her eyebrows raised. She speaks English very well, she thought, but if I'm not mistaken, she has a French accent. Well, Samantha started to say, thinking about the right words. You're right, he's quite handsome, but he can have a bit of a temper. Ha! <laughs> Did she say a bit of a temper? Zoe thought sarcastically. Tara looked at Samantha without changing her expression. She thought, of course he has a bit of a temper. Had you not heard about Alexander Brown's temper before marrying him? Missy felt that he must not be good enough for Samantha, but there was nothing she could say. It's none of my business, she thought. Sam, let me tell you something. My cousin has a bad temper, too. When I was young, I was afraid of him. But later on, I realized that he wouldn't actually do anything. I wouldn't be afraid if I were you. He's probably all bark and no bite. Samantha didn't know what to say. Missy continued. My cousin is also married. I'm going to meet his wife tomorrow, but I don't think I'm going to like her. I'm going to give her a piece of my mind. You're going to show her who's boss, huh? Samantha said, laughing. That's right, Missy said. Samantha never imagined that she was the one Missy was referring to. So he looked meaningfully at Missy and asked, Did you say he was your brother? No, my cousin. I don't have a brother, but I think of him like a brother. So he continued asking questions. Why don't you like his wife? Didn't you say you're just meeting her for the first time? I don't think she's good enough for my cousin, she said, filled with indignation. She had a boyfriend before she married him, and I think she only married him for his money. Don't you think that that kind of woman is horrible? Before getting married, my cousin had never even seen her. It's just so wrong. You can't just marry someone without being in love. Besides, my cousin had a childhood sweetheart, and I think it's so sad that they didn't end up together. Tara covered her face and said, It's like a business contract. It's a bit outdated. Samantha frowned. She kept having a feeling that something was wrong, but she couldn't put her finger on what it was. Zoe's brows slightly raised, and she gave Missy and Samantha a knowing look. She took out her phone and contacted the other two candidates they had interviewed. She was ready to hire a new assistant at any moment. She had her doubts about Missy from day one. Right after they had signed the contract, she sent people to investigate why the other two candidates had left. When she found out the reason, she was shocked, and it raised a lot of suspicions about Missy. They had left because Missy had given each of them a check for $5,000 to give up the position and go home. It had happened when Samantha and Zoe had their backs turned to discuss their decision. The candidates hadn't been very confident about getting the position in the first place, and when they saw how much Missy wanted it, they became even more uncertain. They had simply taken the money and left. The checks were easily traced, and Missy hadn't done anything to hide her identity. So we quickly found out that she was from an affluent family in France, and was Alexander's cousin. That was why Zoe was interrogating her about her family. She was curious about how Missy would react after discovering that her cousin's wife was actually Samantha. Alex, when is your cousin coming? Samantha asked Alexander as she was climbing into bed. Tomorrow. He replied. What? She asked, sitting up and turning on the bedside lamp. The light hurt Alexander's eyes, and he frowned. Why didn't you tell me sooner? She asked, giving him a resentful look. I haven't prepared anything, she thought. Fortunately, I don't have any work or training classes tomorrow. I already told you not to worry about her, Alexander said, stretching his arms and turning off the bedside lamp. Then, he pulled Samantha into his arms to sleep. She couldn't get comfortable. She had a bad feeling again and was thinking about the comments of her assistant. Alex, how old is your cousin? Samantha asked. Sam, let's not talk about her, he said as he started kissing her. He turned her over to face him and pressed his body against hers. His strong legs wrapped around her tightly. Let's talk about something else he said, gently biting her ears. He closed his eyes as he kissed down her neck. Hey, she said, shaking her head. Stop. If your cousin's coming tomorrow, I don't want you to leave any marks on me. 
Alexander looked at her with his eyes growing deeper and told her, Don't worry, I promise I won't. Samantha yawned as she started getting dressed. She noticed that Alexander had left a few marks on her neck despite promising not to. She frowned as she looked at them in the mirror. Luckily, she thought, it's getting quite cold these days. I can cover them up with a turtleneck. She knows we're married. You don't need to cover up. Alexander said when he noticed she was choosing clothes to hide her neck. He was leaning on the door frame of the dressing room, and he seemed to be in a good mood. He didn't care about being hospitable to his cousin. He wasn't even going to bother getting dressed. He was wearing a silk robe with the belt hanging loosely around his waist. Samantha finally decided on a green turtleneck dress, colored tights underneath, and a cardigan. She wanted to close the door to get dressed in private, but Alexander was blocking it. Move, I want to get dressed, Samantha said, trying to push him away. He stood where he was and answered, Go ahead, I don't mind. She glared at him in frustration and thought, Do you have no shame? Of course not, what am I thinking? The dressing room was large, so she walked to the end and turned around to have a bit of privacy. Sam, he said as he looked at her porcelain white back. Yes, she replied, quickly putting on her clothes without looking back at him. Alexander pursed his lips. Look at me when I'm talking to you, he thought. Forget it, he finally said. Samantha changed into her clothes and looked at herself in the full-length mirror. She was satisfied with the outfit she had chosen. Compared to what she usually wore, a white t-shirt and jeans, it looked much more mature. She turned around and walked to Alexander's closet. He wasn't going to work that day, so she chose some clothes for him that were casual but stylish. He didn't care that she was looking and changed his clothes on the spot. Samantha noticed that he was wearing the underwear she had bought for him, and she thought he looked quite sexy. He saw her looking at him and asked, Do you like them? They're the ones you bought for me, remember? He took a step forward and pushed Samantha back against the tall wardrobe, looking at her with a teasing smile, his bathrobe hanging on his arm. Samantha bit her lips and said, Stop it! Put on your clothes! He casually kissed her cheek, showing no signs of moving towards his clothes. Hurry up! She urged him. Your cousin will be here soon. I don't want to be rude! With her pressuring him, he finally left her alone and got dressed. Jim knew that Alexander's cousin was coming, so he had started getting things ready earlier that morning. He had prepared some special fruits and desserts, and the chefs in the main kitchen had started preparing lunch. They had made some gourmet French dishes that all looked very fancy to Samantha, but she thought that it didn't seem like a lot of food, considering there were going to be three of them eating. I guess only his cousin and I will be eating, she thought. Alex won't touch this. I'll have to put something together for him. She was disappointed that she wouldn't have the opportunity to serve Alexander's cousin something that she had prepared personally. She went into the kitchen to cook a separate meal for Alexander. When she was cooking, she was always completely absorbed in it, so she didn't hear his cousin arrive. When she left the kitchen, she heard a female voice talking that sounded a bit familiar. She listened to what the woman was saying. Alex, why did you get married? I already don't like your wife. I know she doesn't come from a good enough family to marry you. You come from very good blood. You have to be careful about whom you allow into our family. And aside from that, why did you choose her? You could marry any woman you want with your status. I think you should get a divorce immediately. Besides, she can't possibly compare to Susie. Have you thought about her? She'll be so sad that you married someone else. Alex, why are you ignoring me? Samantha was holding a pineapple cake in her hands that she had made especially for Alexander's cousin. She hadn't expected to hear her say such things before she had even met her. She stood at the doorway quietly, waiting for Alexander's response. Alex, let me tell you something, his cousin continued. That Miller girl is only pretending to be a good person. You men can't see past a woman's looks. Samantha was completely certain at that point that Alexander's cousin was her assistant, Missy. No wonder I had a strange feeling before, she thought. I can't believe I didn't figure it out sooner. Missy heard footsteps coming from the kitchen and was about to tell Alexander's new wife exactly what she thought of her. 
but her words got stuck in her throat when she saw who it was. She was stunned. Sam? Why are you here? She asked, looking back at Alexander doubtfully. He sat down on the armchair with a tired expression. He had long been annoyed by his cousin's nagging, and at that moment, he was even more uninterested in dealing with her. The housekeeper beside him carefully said, "'Miss Mitchell, I would like to introduce you to Mrs. Brown.' Missy didn't know what to say. She felt like nothing in her life made sense. Samantha gave her a weak smile and said, "'That's right, Missy. I guess I'm the woman that you hate so much.' "'How could this be?' Missy said in a barely audible voice. She was so shocked that her mouth hung open in disbelief. How could my idol be the woman I despise so much, she thought. It can't be. Alex, tell me this isn't true, Missy said. She looked like she was about to cry. She had heard a lot of stories online about the daughter of the Miller family, but she had never verified which daughter they were talking about. There were so many different opinions on social media that it was hard to tell what was true and what was false. She had just paid attention to what confirmed her beliefs. And the only thing she had heard about Samantha Miller were related to her career as a model. She tried to make sense of all the conflicting information in her mind. I know that Samantha Miller, my hero, doesn't come from a reputable background, she thought. I have no problem with that. She's a good person and is extremely talented. But I can't let Alex marry a person from a family like hers. It would be like a stain in our bloodline. Besides, the woman he married had just broken up with her ex-boyfriend before marrying him. What kind of woman does that? She must be a horrible person who's just out for his money. Samantha wanted to put down the cake that she was holding in her hands, so she took a step forward. Don't come over here. Missy said, pointing at Samantha as if she was facing a great enemy. Samantha took another step forward, feeling confused. She had been getting along well with Missy, and she wasn't sure what to say. Sam, I told you not to come over. I don't want to be near you, Missy announced dramatically. To think that I liked you so much, you lied to me, Missy exclaimed as tears rolled down her cheeks. With her young face, Samantha thought that Missy looked more like a high school student than a grown woman. She contemplated what Missy had said and considered the claim that she had lied. She felt angry. Samantha continued to walk forward, and Missy quickly moved to the side and watched as she placed the pineapple cake in the middle of the table. Missy's crying face became awkward when she realized that Samantha hadn't been walking toward her at all. Alexander finished reading the document in his hand closed it and put it aside. Then he walked towards Samantha. Alex! Missy exclaimed. She wanted to pull on Alexander's hand, but she remembered her cousin's dislike of touching, so she stopped herself from reaching out. Alexander looked at the pineapple cake that Samantha had just taken out of the oven and said with a look of disgust, Sam, I don't like pineapples. Even so, he cut himself a piece and took a bite. It's too sweet he said with disdain. If you don't like it, don't eat it, replied Samantha, and she lowered her gaze and looked at the tiles on the floor with a calm expression. She hadn't prepared the pineapple cake for him. She had remembered that Missy had told her that she had liked pineapples so much that she often made herself pineapple cake. Samantha knew that the French were famous for their desserts and sweet things, so she had added a lot of sugar to the recipe she had used. Pineapple cake, wow! Missy said excitedly. She stretched her neck and looked at the table. She had wondered what the delicious smell was. She began to salivate and imagined eating a large slice of the cake. Samantha's gaze swept over her, and she immediately retracted her neck. She looked left and right and pretended that nothing had happened. Alexander stared at Samantha's face for a few seconds, and then he turned to Missy and said, "'Since you're not satisfied with Sam, you can go back to France.' "'Why are you acting like this, Alex?' asked Missy. "'I'm your cousin!' She was on the verge of tears again, and Alexander had caught her off guard. Alexander moved and hugged Samantha's waist, and Missy saw that his actions were natural and intimate. He clicked his tongue at her and said, "'I have more than one cousin, but I only have one wife.' 
The Mitchell family was large, and Alexander had several cousins, but Missy had always been the closest to him. Missy frowned and asked, What's so good about a wife? Melissa, a wife is a wife, answered Jim seriously. Missy was dissatisfied with the reply and retorted, You can always marry another wife. She looked at Samantha provocatively. Samantha felt movement at her waist and looked down. She saw that Alexander was tapping his fingers against her belt. She knew immediately that it was a sign of his impatience. Jim, please arrange a plane to send her back, Alexander said, looking hard at his cousin. Yes, of course, Jim responded with a smile. He had been worried that the appearance of Missy would affect Alexander and Samantha's relationship, and he was relieved at his boss's decision. I don't want to! I don't want to get on a plane! Missy shouted. Alex, I still want to be Sam's assistant. Remember, I signed a contract! Samantha looked up and with a fake smile said, Missy, I'll cover the costs of your breach of contract. Why are you being like this? Missy demanded, stamping her feet. You were obviously very satisfied with my work these last few days, she continued. Seeing Missy's desire to stay, Samantha wondered if she was really as bad as she had begun to think she was. Maybe she's just a little immature, she thought. Missy pitifully begged Alexander to let her stay. She explained that she wasn't willing to return to France, especially because she had only just arrived in Springfield. She said that she wanted to stay and get to know Samantha properly. In the end, to get her to shut up, Alexander said that Missy could stay for dinner. He made it clear that after the meal, she would have to leave. Missy was outraged, but she kept quiet. They all took their places at the dining table. Missy, like Samantha, was a food lover, and she especially liked Thai and Vietnamese dishes. She knew that her cousin was very picky and didn't really enjoy the flavors that she did, especially spices. Even so, she could see that the culinary skills of Alexander's chefs were top-notch and that it would be a lot of temptation for a foodie like herself to have access to such high-quality food every day. Especially that pineapple cake, she thought, eyeballing it from across the table. It was golden and crispy, and the fragrance drifted in all directions. Missy tried a few of the dishes set out on the table and was about to pick up a slice of the cake when Alexander slapped her cutlery out of her hand. Samantha looked up in shock. You can't eat that, Alexander said. Missy didn't understand and looked at him quizzically. Why? Well, it was made by Sam, and you don't like my wife, so why do you want to eat her food? Alexander asked before looking at a member of the staff who was standing close by. The staff member understood tacitly what the look meant and moved the pineapple cake even further away from Missy. Missy's eyes moved along with the cake, and the greedy look on her face made Samantha want to laugh out loud. If you don't want to eat it, Alex, don't stop me, Missy said, annoyed with her cousin. She placed some fried rice on her plate and said, It doesn't matter. I'll eat something cooked by a proper chef instead. Jim laughed. He looked at her and said, Missy, the things you were eating were all cooked by Samantha. Even our head chef is impressed by her culinary skills. A proper chef might not be able to cook such delicious food as Mrs. Brown does. Samantha almost dropped her fork on the table. She was surprised because she wasn't aware that the head chef had said such things about her cooking. Let's eat, Alexander said impatiently. He picked up some of the roast meat and placed it on Samantha's plate. The action stopped Samantha from asking any questions. Impossible! exclaimed Missy as she tried to stop herself from staring longingly at the pineapple cake. The more she looked at it, the more she wanted to eat it. Looking around the table, Samantha finally understood that both Alexander and Jim were playing with Missy. Missy keenly noticed that her picky cousin had eaten quite a lot of the dishes in front of him, including slow-cooked meat, roasted and steamed vegetables, and rosemary potatoes. Missy wondered if the simple dishes on the table really were delicious. They must be, or Alex, with his food intolerances, wouldn't eat them, she thought, before she reached out to try to help herself to some of the meat. Alex once again slapped the cutlery out of her hand and said, 
This was also made by Sam. You can't have any. Missy was speechless and became downcast as she ate the food Alexander permitted her to. When she saw her cousin eating the dishes that Samantha had made, she couldn't help but watch. Before she could stop herself, Missy complained to Alexander in French about his behavior towards her. She was surprised when it was Samantha who quietly answered, You're an adult. Why are you still complaining? Missy was shocked and looked from Samantha to Alexander and back again. You can speak French? she asked. Samantha looked at Alexander, who met her eye. Although he had remained expressionless, she got the impression that she had impressed him and that he wasn't going to tell her off. She smiled and picked up a large piece of pineapple cake, feeling very satisfied with herself. Alexander picked up the jug of cream from the table and poured some of it onto Samantha's bowl. Again, it was an obvious display of affection, and Missy couldn't believe it. These two are too much. They're so mean for bullying me, she thought angrily. She was so furious that she had traveled so far to see her cousin and that he didn't seem to care about her. To her, it seemed that her cousin was on the same side as Samantha. After eating, Missy asked to be excused from the table and went into the living room. Samantha and Alexander went upstairs and Alexander went into his study. Missy found Jim and quietly said, I don't want to go home, Jim. Can you persuade Alex to let me stay? I don't have any say in Mr. Brown's decisions, but you know he's a man of his word, Jim said solemnly. He pointed upstairs and said, If you really want to stay, why don't you ask Mrs. Brown for help? <laughs> I don't want to talk to her, Missy replied. Upstairs, Samantha called Zoe. She told her that she needed a change of assistant and asked if it was something she could organize. When she hung up the phone and turned around, Alexander was standing at the door. Alex, what are you doing up here? Don't you need to visit with Missy? Samantha asked doubtfully. Although Alexander had protected her at the dinner table, she could tell that the relationship between the two cousins was very good. Alexander's eyes flashed, and he said, I came in to get some work things. Get what? Samantha asked, walking around the bedroom. All your work documents are in the study. You've never had them in here. Oh, yes, Alexander said. Really, he had wanted to check on Samantha and make sure she wasn't upset but he wasn't willing to admit that. He turned around and went to leave, but then he paused and said, Don't worry about her. Samantha was a little confused and looked at Alexander for further explanation. Sam, I'm the person you married. You only need to care about me, he said, and without waiting for her to reply, he left the room and walked out of Samantha's line of sight. Samantha smiled as she realized that he hadn't come to the bedroom for anything at all, he had come and left empty-handed without even entering the room. He's so strange, she thought, before happily going back downstairs. Missy was still talking to Jim, who smiled kindly but shook his head. Missy sighed out loud. Oh, Sam, I have something to tell you, she said when she saw Samantha come down the stairs. Samantha noticed that her tone was filled with attitude. So she folded her arms and stopped walking to look at the young woman. Missy swallowed hard. She took a deep breath and said, I want to continue being your assistant. Samantha smiled and said, I'm really sorry, but I just called Zoe to tell her I need a new assistant. One who doesn't hate me. She'll be looking for someone new as we speak. What? Missy's small brows knitted together and she felt extremely wronged. How can you do this to me? She asked. If Missy was honest with herself, she didn't hate Samantha, but she wasn't willing to admit it out loud, and she still felt that Samantha wasn't worthy of Alexander, or being a part of her family. I've signed an agreement. I have a contract. I'm protected by the law, Missy shouted. Jim, why haven't you sent her away yet? Alexander asked as he walked out of the study and looked down over the balustrade from the second floor. But I don't want to leave, yelled Missy. She looked around as though she wanted to throw something. Seeing that a maid was about to come over and escort her away, she quickly grabbed Samantha's arm and hugged it tightly. I want to stay, 
Please help me. I'll be a great assistant, she begged. Samantha raised her eyebrows and deliberately said, If you don't like being by my side, you won't like being my assistant, and you won't do your best work. A trace of a smile flashed across Alexander's face, and he looked at Samantha. The kitten has become a fox again, he thought. I did my best, Missy replied. I'm definitely a person who can separate my professional life from my private life. I promise. Sam, can you let me stay, please? She continued to beg for a long time before Samantha reluctantly nodded her head. Missy jumped up in celebration and stretched her neck toward Alexander, who was still on the second floor landing. Proudly, she said, Alex, she agreed. Alexander lowered his eyes and revealed a faint smile. He didn't say anything further about sending Missy back to France, but he did remind Jim to send her back to her apartment. Jim arranged for Tim to drive Missy back, and when he arrived to collect her, Samantha took him aside to give him a few words of advice. Missy saw Tim nodding his head repeatedly at Samantha from afar. It was obvious to her that he agreed with her request. Once she was in the car, Missy impatiently asked him, What did Sam say just now? Did she say bad things about me? Tim told the truth. Mrs. Brown asked me to find you a safer place to stay. Although your apartment isn't bad, the security measures aren't great. He looked in the rearview mirror and continued. Then I'll get you a car. Missy had traveled to Springfield from France alone without telling anyone her plan. She couldn't use her credit cards and hadn't taken much money with her. When she had dared to use the family's credit card, she found that her father had already stopped it. His plan was to cut her off and force her to return to France. Missy pouted and looked at Tim in disbelief. Why is she being so nice after everything I said about her? Isn't buying a house and a car using my cousin's money a bit hypocritical? She said. Tim looked at the young woman in the rear view mirror, smiled, and said, You've misunderstood. Mrs. Brown said she wanted to rent an apartment for you. The car will just be a used one, not something expensive. He looked at her again to make sure that she was listening. The money isn't Mr. Brown's. The rent will be deducted from your salary as Samantha's assistant, and the car will be a loan. You will have to pay Mrs. Brown back if you decide not to be her assistant anymore. Oh my God, Missy exclaimed. She's so stingy, and she bullied me. Missy felt that she was no better off. She would still have to pay for rent, and if the car was old and small, she would rather take the subway. Tim's smile became even wider. Actually, this is a good deal for you, he said. Mrs. Brown has never spent her husband's money. She doesn't have a lot of savings, and she doesn't own property either. Missy was so angry that she didn't want to speak. It's one thing not giving me any pineapple cake, but she's actually a stingy poor person, she thought. She felt so aggrieved that she burst into tears. The more she thought about it, the more she felt wronged. After a few minutes, she pulled herself together and demanded that Tim change his route to take her to the most famous patisserie in Springfield. She went in and hurriedly bought a pineapple cake for herself. The cake didn't look as good as Samantha's, and the smell wasn't as delicious either. Missy surveyed it, and then took a bite and chewed. She was disappointed with the average taste and wondered if Samantha's was better. The more she thought about it, the more she wanted to eat that pineapple cake that Samantha had made. Tim told Missy that he would be in touch once he had arranged the apartment in the car. Only after seeing her walk out of the front door did he feel at ease and leave. Missy sulked for two hours in her apartment. She kept checking her phone to look at the time difference between here and France. As soon as the time ticked over to a reasonable hour, she dialed a French number. Susie, the woman Alex married is actually Sam Miller, and she bullied me. The more Missy spoke, the more she wanted to cry, but she stubbornly held back her tears. Susie paused for a moment and processed what Missy had told her. When she answered, there was a hint of delight in her soft voice. Sorry, Missy. I didn't know any of that. I would have told you. Oh, Susie, it's not your fault, Missy replied. 
The two women continued to chat for a while before Missy asked, When are you coming back to the States? I miss you. Soon, and I'll look you up, I promise. Samantha told Alexander about what she had spoken with Tim about. Alex was sitting in his office chair in the study, reading business documents. When he heard her speak, he looked up unhappily and said, Sam, do you have a lot of money? Samantha stammered and pouted. Alex, she's your cousin, she said, surprised that he was unhappy at her trying to help Missy. Alexander was indeed unhappy. You weren't so generous with me, he said, and Samantha's anger instantly froze. He pinched Samantha's cheek, and she saw he had gritted his teeth. He continued speaking. Missy doesn't like you. How much will you spend on her? Alex, I heard you love your cousin. Is that true? Samantha asked. The two women were very different, but Samantha felt that she had understood Missy. She was able to look past the harm that the young woman had tried to do to her and see the good underneath. That was why Samantha had made the offer. Sam, come here, Alexander said, and he suddenly made a move to pull her close. Samantha was surprised when he grabbed her waist and pulled her onto his lap. I'll send an assistant to you tomorrow and drive Missy away, Alexander said. He hugged Samantha from behind and placed his chin on her shoulder. Don't, 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 Samantha said, shrugging in discomfort. It's your fault for being too thin, Alexander said in response. He could feel his chin resting on her bones. Samantha couldn't be bothered to answer him. Aren't models supposed to be thin, she thought. Alexander wrote down a string of numbers for Samantha and said, Contact her next time. Who's she? Samantha asked as she looked at the phone number in her hand. She was suspicious at how easily Alexander had remembered the number. Abby, replied Alexander. Hang on, if I remember correctly, one of your staff at Blue Whale is called Abby, right? The woman Samantha remembered wasn't Alexander's chief assistant, but she was second in line. She wondered why Alexander wanted to give such an experienced member of staff to her, to be her assistant. What a waste of talent, she thought. Samantha knew that Alexander wouldn't joke about such a thing, and she quickly shook her head. I think Missy is good. If she wants to stay, I'll keep her on, said Samantha. Alexander tilted his head and looked at her questioningly. In the eyes of many people, I'm not worthy of you. It's to be expected that Missy doesn't like me. I understand. If I were her, I'd probably think the same thing, Samantha lied. She didn't feel that she wasn't worthy of Alexander. She hadn't chosen her family, and despite Alexander being outstanding and extraordinary, Samantha felt that she could do well for herself without him. After she finished speaking, she felt the pressure of Alexander's embrace change, and a coldness spread. She turned her head and met Alexander's eyes, which were cold as ice. Sam, do you want to divorce me? Alexander asked. Before Samantha could answer, he said, I won't let you. Without his consent, Samantha knew that her only option was to remain married to him. But before she had a chance to speak, Alexander said domineeringly, No matter how others view our marriage, and no matter what they say about our relationship, as long as I don't let go, you can forget about leaving my side. Samantha's heart trembled. His controlling behavior made her feel short of breath. But then she began to think about things in more detail, and her emotions quickly changed. In front of his cousin, he protects me, and he's even suggested that Abby should be my assistant. Does this mean he actually cares? Samantha wondered. She was aware that Alexander's personality was a little awkward, and that his actions were always considered. She wondered if his interest in her was just a passing phase. I don't, Samantha said, returning to the topic. She kissed the corner of his mouth and said seriously, I don't want to divorce you, Alex. What I said before wasn't a lie. It was my promise. Alexander smiled. Give me another kiss. If you kiss me again, I'll believe you, he said. Believe it or not, Samantha said as she struggled to leave. 
She managed to stand up, but a force behind her pushed her forward. Surprised, she turned around and Alexander grabbed her waist again and lifted her up to sit on his desk. She looked down and saw that she was sitting on a blue whale document, which made her feel a little embarrassed. Let me down, she said, but Alexander took hold of her face and kissed it. She knew that if she didn't distract him, he would continue to kiss her. Alex, I'm sitting on your company's bidding list, Samantha protested as she turned around anxiously, trying to release the document from under her. Baby, your ears are red, Alexander said as he kissed her again. Samantha was surprised that he didn't seem to care about his work. She thought quickly about what would make him release her, and she decided to use her trump card. Hubby, Samantha said calmly. As expected, Alexander's movements stopped. She saw the emotion in his eyes grow stronger. Shall we go to the bathroom? Alexander asked as he kissed her again. Although it was a question, Alexander picked Samantha up before she could answer and walked toward the master bedroom. Samantha was shocked and uncomfortable. She quickly hugged his neck to stop herself from feeling like he would drop her. There happened to be a maid passing by outside in the corridor. On seeing the couple together, she quickly lowered her head and stood where she was as she waited for Samantha and Alexander to pass. Samantha covered her face in embarrassment. The bathroom was just the beginning. They also had sex on a couch, against a closet, and on the bed. Samantha couldn't understand where Alexander had found his energy. He was usually so stressed and tired from work. As winter drew closer, the temperature in Springfield plummeted, and a festive feeling started to build. One day, whilst Alexander was out at work, Jim received a phone call. When Alexander got home, Jim pulled him aside to speak to him about it. Mr. Brown, your father's birthday dinner is scheduled to be held the day after tomorrow. Do you want to go? Jim had been brought into the Brown family by Alexander's mother. After that, he had followed Alexander when he had left the family, and as a result, he didn't have a good impression of Simon. Alexander immediately wanted to turn down the invitation, but after thinking it over for a while, he answered, Yes, I'll go. Both Jim and Samantha were surprised. Alexander didn't like Simon, and they hadn't expected that he would want to attend. Alex, do you need me to prepare a birthday gift? Samantha asked after thinking about it. She didn't like Simon either. I'll prepare it, don't worry, he answered, and then he called Jim over and spoke to him about potential gifts. Jim frowned and hesitated. Mr. Brown, is it really a good idea to do this? Alexander's sharp eyes swept over him, and his expression hardened. Jim quickly said, I'll organize it right away. On the day of Simon's party, Samantha went out early to see a stylist, and the stylist she chose was Alvin Russo. Mrs. Brown, it is my honor to be able to serve you again, Alvin exclaimed. He was very happy to see Samantha. He had grown out his hair, and Samantha thought he looked very funny, almost like an eccentric artist. As soon as Alvin finished speaking, a cold warning gaze shot over from Alexander. Alvin lowered his eyes, pretending to be serious, and watched as Alexander went outside to take a call. When the door closed, Alvin immediately complained to Samantha with an exaggerated expression. Sam, how can a gentle and cute person like you tolerate a man like that? He is overbearing and unreasonable. Alvin sighed and looked at her in the mirror as he set about styling Samantha's hair. I feel like he's a wolf guarding you as if you're a rabbit that can be taken away at any time. Perhaps you could run away, he said, looking at her mischievously. No way, Samantha said, amused by Alvin. Before me and him, I was the weak one. Alvin didn't comment, but he could see that it was Alexander who cared about Samantha more than she cared about him. His eyes were glued to her.
After working for Alexander for so many years, it was the first time that Alvin had seen him expose a weak spot. Samantha had delicate facial features and perfect skin. She didn't need any makeup at all, and all Alvin had to do was match her look to the color of the gown she was to wear. Alexander finished the call and returned. Samantha was ready. She wore a long dress with wide sleeves and a diagonal slash neckline. It was a deep blue color. Alexander thought she looked like a beauty who had walked out of an oil painting, but he pretended to be indifferent to her and said, Let's go. Alvin pursed his lips and smiled. He knew that Alexander was satisfied with his work. At the same time, Samantha was sizing up Alexander. He wore a custom-made black suit. The cut was exquisite, and every detail of it was perfect. The only thing that looked to be wrong with his outfits was his cufflinks. Alexander was wearing the cufflinks that Samantha had given him, but their color and style didn't match his suit's style. Samantha's heart raced as she said, Alexander, after the party, I'll give you another set of cufflinks, all right? Alexander gave her a cold look. First a car and a house for Missy. Have you found your conscience? He said. The wind was gentle, the sun was bright, and the brown mansion was lively. Simon had invited a lot of people to his party. Outside, there were many expensive cars parked up, and lots of people coming and going. Mr. Brown, this way, please, said the maid as she respectfully opened the car door. Alexander and Samantha got out of the car and immediately attracted everyone's attention. Samantha suddenly felt very self-conscious and had some concerns about her outfit. Her dress was very expensive, and the color and fit were eye-catching. She didn't want to stand out for the wrong reason. A few guests nearby came to greet Alexander. Separated by the cold silver mask, the guests didn't dare to get too close to him or stay too long, and they soon went to say their congratulatory words to Simon. Of all the Brown family, Alexander was the one who arrived last. Simon, Lorraine, and Albert greeted the guests. When they saw Alexander and Samantha, they were all stunned. They had thought that Alexander, whom they knew to have a strange temperament, wouldn't go, and they certainly hadn't expected him to turn up with Samantha. They suddenly felt uneasy. It seemed to them that every time they saw Alexander, there was trouble. Alex, you actually came, Albert said with a gentle smile on his face. But under his thin glasses, there was a trace of sharpness and viciousness. His words seemed to be a greeting, but in fact, he wanted the guests to know how rude and arrogant Alexander was to his father. Lorraine put on a fake smile. She didn't even bother to try and maintain a friendly look with Alexander. She was still angry that he had seriously injured her and caused a lot of trouble at her son's engagement party. After some investigation, she had found out that the scandalous video that had been played at the party was most likely Alexander's work. What she hadn't expected was that the person she sent to deal with Alexander had actually been caught out by him. Lorraine realized that she had underestimated her brother. Alexander glanced at Albert, and then his gaze swept past Lorraine and finally stopped on Simon. Father, happy birthday, Alexander said coldly. Simon's tensed face relaxed a little. He had been thinking about how he would deal with this son if he humiliated him in front of so many people. Happy birthday to you, said Samantha politely. The tense atmosphere seemed to disappear in an instant. The guests smiled and talked together. Simon was a little puzzled that Alexander had not only come to congratulate him on his birthday, but that he was also being polite. Maybe he wants to fight for his position in the Brown family, he thought. Alexander didn't stay in the hall for long. He took Samantha upstairs to his old bedroom on the second floor. The room was clean and tidy, but was still the same as the last time he had been there. Even the position of the bedside lamp had not changed at all. There's a book over there that you might like, Alexander said, pointing in the direction of a small study and indicating to Samantha that she could look around. Alexander walked out onto the balcony by himself and took some papers out from the inside of his suit. Samantha walked around the room once and then went out on the balcony too. She saw a few words written on the documents that Alexander was examining. 
It was a proposal from Brown Corporation to acquire the shares of Blue Whale Enterprises' pharmaceutical sector. Want to take a look? Alexander asked as he passed the letter to Samantha. Samantha was at a loss. But I don't know anything about business, she said awkwardly. Just take a look, Alexander encouraged. Samantha remembered that in the past, the Jackson family's pharmaceutical market had been one of the most powerful in the country. After the scandal on the island, she had also heard Ava talk about the Jackson family's acquisition of shares. She hadn't expected that the person who had bought the shares would be Alexander. It seemed to her that the Browns family business wanted to buy the portion of the pharmaceutical market that Alexander had bought. The documents also suggested that the Browns wanted to take some of the business back for the Jacksons. Furthermore, the Browns wanted to purchase the shares at a lower price than the market value. What do you think? Alexander asked when he saw Samantha frown. He looked at her with a mocking expression, expecting her to have understood only a little. It's not worth it, Samantha said, shaking her head. She paused and chose her words carefully. Pharmaceuticals are generally very profitable. The shares you acquired from the Jacksons have a lot of value and can make you money. The Browns obviously want to increase their influence in the sector. If they obtain your shares, it will weaken Blue Whale Enterprises and strengthen the Brown Corporation at the same time. Alexander was stunned for a few seconds, but then he smiled. He didn't hide the praise from showing in his eyes. Samantha paused for a moment and raised her eyes to see Alexander's reaction. Keep going, he said, curious to hear what more she had to say. She let out a deep breath and continued. She knew that she was right. Well, the Brown Corporation belongs to your family, but your father might not give it to you. It's worth a lot of money. I think he'll likely give it to Lorraine. So, in my opinion, there's really no need to bother with him. You're right, Alexander said as Samantha sat on his lap. I'm going to think about what you said. You brought up some really good points. You know a thing or two about business. My wife is so smart, he thought as he kissed her cheek. I learned some things about it at one of my old part-time jobs, <laughs> she replied. She had worked as an English translator for a big company to earn some extra money in the past. There, she had learned a little bit about business. She considered business to be a reflection of society. She related it to what she knew about social problems, and it made more sense to her that way. At that moment, they heard a child's surprising voice come from the garden below. Mommy! Look at the people! They're hugging! Outside the balcony in Alexander's room was a garden where some guests were relaxing. There was a woman who had taken her child of about two or three years outside to play. The child was raising his head and pointing at Alexander and Samantha in curiosity. The guests around the child looked in the direction he was pointing and saw Samantha sitting on Alexander's lap. The blue dress that she was wearing was very distinct, and with Alexander's trademark silver mask, anyone could tell who they were at a glance. Samantha's face instantly turned red, and she turned her back to them. Mr. and Mrs. Brown, I'm really sorry. He's just curious, the boy's mother quickly said as an apology. No, it's okay, Samantha cried out, pretending to be calm as she awkwardly got up from Alexander's lap. She quietly touched his arm to get him to say something. She didn't think that it was a big deal. Everyone understood that it was just something coming from a child and was innocent. But she knew that the woman would wait until Alexander accepted her apology. It's fine, he said, loud enough for them to hear. Then he took the documents and turned around to return to his room. When they disappeared from the balcony, the women below started talking amongst themselves. I see that Alex and his wife are getting along. Sam has now become the favorite, and her sister Lily has been cast aside. You never know. Let's see what happens. If Lily marries someone else, she could have an even better life than her sister. You're right. You never know. Look at the Jackson family now. They used to be very well-to-do, but I heard that Lorraine is running back to the Brown family for help every few days. Most likely, she has her eyes set on some of their property. Oh, I just heard that Lily is going to be here today. 
Really? Impossible! Her parents said they weren't going to attend the party because they were sick. They even asked other people to take their gifts for them. Do you think that Lily will have the nerve to come alone? Look over there, one woman said, raising her chin in the direction of the door. It was Lily, who was dressed up for the party, and beside her was Albert. Albert politely waved at the guests and pulled Lily along with him as if there was nothing out of the ordinary. Lily had only been discharged from the hospital less than a week earlier, but Albert had called her to attend the party. The wound on her abdomen hadn't fully healed, and her face looked haggard. Only with extremely heavy makeup could she cover it up. Because Samantha was still a bit embarrassed about being caught on Alexander's lap, she was shy to go down to the garden. She just stood at the door to the balcony and looked outside. There, she saw Lily holding hands with Albert from afar. Why is Lily here with Albert? Samantha asked Alexander in surprise. Alexander was sitting on the couch lazily. He already knew about them and answered casually. Albert dragged her here to annoy everyone. I suppose he's trying to make things difficult for Lorraine and the Jackson family, she thought. It's going to be an interesting night. Ten minutes after the dinner had officially started, Alexander and Samantha went downstairs. Are you too important to join us, Alex? The party started a long time ago, Lorraine said, with a proud smile on her face. She said it loud enough for everyone to hear. She wanted the guests to think that her brother was arrogant and rude. Alexander didn't care. Uh-huh, he said casually. The surrounding guests coughed awkwardly and covered their mouths with their hands to hide their smiles. Lorraine's smile froze, and she looked at him angrily. She decided she didn't want to be next to him, so she took her glass of champagne and walked away, her high heels clicking loudly. Alexander hadn't intended to show up late. He had taken a nap in his bedroom, and Samantha hadn't woken him up in time. But he didn't care about being impolite. He thought that the Brown family didn't treat him with respect, and in return, he treated them the same way. A housekeeper quietly walked over and whispered into Alexander's ear, Sir, your father intends to give the building materials business in Leonard's hands to Lorraine. Samantha was close enough to hear what the housekeeper had said and was shocked. But Alexander, who was on her arm, seemed to have expected the news. His eyes became focused, as though he had made a decision. My father took a lot of things that belonged to me and gave them to Albert and Lorraine, he thought. Now he's doing the same to Leonard. He undoubtedly wants to get rid of us, to isolate us from the family. This isn't about money or status. It's personal. Samantha thought that the housekeeper looked familiar. She looked at her a few more times before remembering that she had often seen her with Simon. She realized at that moment that the housekeeper must have been a spy put there by Alexander to watch Simon. She looked at Alexander with apprehension. He quickly restrained his emotions and said coldly, Sam, just sit back and watch the show. His words were light and casual, but there was a storm hidden behind them. After Simon finished his speech, he invited his family members to join him on a temporary stage that had been erected. Samantha and Alexander were far away and were leisurely walking over when they heard a wave of noise coming from the stage. Lorraine had taken Brady with her onto the stage. Mia wasn't there because she was out of the country on vacation. Following closely behind Lorraine was Albert, who had taken Lily up with him. Below the stage stood Isabel. She had Brady's child in her belly, who would be Simon's first great-grandson. She had been invited to attend the birthday party. She wasn't allowed to go up on the stage, but she didn't care. As long as she could be there, it was enough to prove her existence. The guests were talking excitedly amongst themselves about the scandalous scene in front of them. Isn't that the daughter of the Miller family? Didn't she break off the engagement with the Jackson son? Why is she with Albert now? Did you see that? The woman in the red dress up front is Brady's new girlfriend. She's carrying his child. 
This is what the Jacksons do. They get women knocked up, and then they have to take care of them all. There was really no need to cancel the engagement because of it. I think they just canceled it because they don't like Lily. But Brady's no catch himself. I heard that Lily almost caused his girlfriend to have a miscarriage. And did you hear that she almost killed someone? What? Killed someone? Who? I heard about that too, though I'm not sure who it was. Simon looked at Albert with an ugly expression. He had never imagined that he would bring Lily back into his house and didn't care for a moment why he was with her. Albert, what are you doing? He asked. Father, I only brought her here because she was so sad. She wants to see... Albert started to say as he looked in Brady's direction. Brady and Lorraine looked furious. Their faces were twisted in anger. Brady, I didn't do anything wrong. I don't you want me anymore, Lily said softly and with a light stutter. Her eyes, however, were empty and cold. Albert had told her to say that. She was just doing what she was told in order to get revenge. You know what you've done, Brady shouted at her angrily. If Lily could accept Isabel and the child she was carrying, and if she hadn't tried to commit suicide to provoke Samantha and Alexander, he might have been still interested in marrying her. It was Lily who had actually called off the engagement. Albert, what is the meaning of this? Lorraine said, trying to suppress her anger. I don't think I've done anything against you, and your father certainly hasn't. How dare you do such a thing and cause a scene like this on his birthday? Albert, get her out of here! Simon yelled angrily. Lily was no longer as arrogant as she had been before. When Simon shouted at her, she got scared and backed away from Albert in fear. The guests all looked at her with pity. Dad, I want to talk to you about something, Albert said. Lorraine has a lot of housework to do these days. I don't think it's a good idea for you to transfer Leonard's part of the business to her. It'll be unfair to Leonard, first of all, but it will also increase the burden on the rain. Albert smiled politely and said, What do you think? Lorraine gritted her teeth. What business is it of yours, she thought, and why bring that up now? Simon was considering what Albert had said. I had to give it to someone, he thought. Leonard is desperate for a woman and has no interest in his family's wealth. I definitely don't want to give it to Alex, but Leonard's things always end up going to Albert if I don't intervene. It's clear that Albert brought Lily as a slap in the face to Lorraine, and I shouldn't reward him for that. But it's true that with the whole scandal of Brady cheating on Lily, it would be unwise for me to give Leonard's share to Lorraine right now. I have to be careful what I do. There are still a lot of eyes on us. Dad, I thought we had already agreed about this. Lorraine shouted pitifully as she noticed Simon considering what Albert had said. And it wouldn't only be helping me, but also your grandson and great-grandson. Albert, Lorraine is your older sister. Before her mother died, she entrusted me to take good care of her. Simon whispered to Albert. The Jackson family was at the end of its rope. The three most profitable sectors in their business had been taken over by Blue Whale Enterprises. The sectors that were left weren't managed well and were losing money. If Simon didn't help, Jackson Enterprise was in danger of going bankrupt within a month. Seeing Lorraine so desperate gave Samantha a chill down her back. She thought it was quite a pitiful sight. Alexander had heard Simon's comment about taking care of Lorraine, and he let out a wicked laugh. His light brown eyes narrowed and locked on to Simon and Lorraine as if he was looking at pure trash. Simon looked at his beloved daughter. He wanted to help her and didn't want to do anything to hurt her in front of so many guests. Every so often, he gave Albert a dirty look. I always thought that Albert was the obedient and sensible son, he thought. Why did he choose today to become so heartless? Albert maintained a polite smile on the surface, but inside, he was full of disdain. He resented his father because of how he had treated him. My father only liked my mother for a short time, he thought, and only because she reminded him of Lorraine's mother. He never really loved me. 
At least I was treated better than Alex and Leonard, but it was clear that he only ever really loved Lorraine. Alex has the powerful backing of his mother's family, the Mitchells, but me? I have nothing. Albert had pretended all his life to be humble and obedient, but he had secretly been planning to stab his family in the back when they were least expecting it. Father, I've prepared a gift for you, Alexander said, interrupting. He had seen enough of the drama. He took Samantha's hand and walked over to Simon. Oh, a gift? Simon asked. He looked at Alexander with a rare expression of gratitude because his intervention had given him a way out of the awkward situation. Samantha looked at Alexander, remembering Jim's reaction to the gift previously. She had a feeling that it wasn't going to be something good. Alexander looked at Jack, who respectfully walked forward and presented Simon with a black gift box. Samantha felt that something was wrong. A gift box for a birthday celebration shouldn't be black, she thought. Simon didn't think much about it. He smiled and opened it. But the next moment, his smile froze and was instantly replaced by an expression of fear. Ah, you bastard! He cried. The gift in the box fell to the ground and rolled onto the floor. It was a gorgeous dagger with a cold, sharp blade and rubies glittering on the handle. What is the meaning of this? Why would you give me something like this? Simon asked, pointing at Alexander, his fingertips trembling with anger and fear. Samantha was shocked, but she also thought that the dagger must be worth a lot of money. She didn't understand why Simon had had such a strong reaction to it. He's so frightened, she thought. Maybe it reminds him of something. I heard that Amelia Mitchell had used a dagger to commit suicide, one of the other guests whispered. Really? It can't be that one, another guest replied. Everyone was gossiping amongst themselves. Samantha's heart skipped a beat. Amelia was Alex's mother, she thought. Father, what are you afraid of? Alexander said under the cold silver mask. It's not like I'm going to kill you. His mouth formed a smile, but there was no warmth in his eyes. Is that what you're afraid of? Alex, what nonsense are you talking about? Simon roared. Then he pointed to the bodyguards and said, You! Throw him out! They acted as if they hadn't heard him and didn't move a muscle. They were all people Alexander had hired to be in the Brown Mansion. They weren't about to follow Simon's orders against Alexander. Alexander curled his lower lip into an evil-looking grin. Alex, don't do anything impulsive, Samantha whispered in his ear as she tugged anxiously at his sleeve. Alexander looked relaxed, but he was actually quite on edge. The air was thick with tension. Samantha was afraid that Simon would say something in the next moment to aggravate him and make him pull out his gun. Alex, be careful what you do in front of so many people, she thought. Alexander was still looking at Simon intensely. At the same time, he was squeezing Samantha's hand to comfort her. Father, this knife has taken more than one life, remember? He said slowly. And strangely... They all had connections with you. If you've forgotten, allow me to remind you. Shut up! I don't want you to remind me! Shut up! Simon cried out. His eyes were wide open in panic, and he had forgotten all about maintaining his image in front of his guests. The guests were shocked. Simon was acting like a madman, and they took it as proof that there was some truth to what Alexander was saying. When Amelia had died, it had been announced to the public that she had died of natural causes. But less than a month after her death, Lorraine's mother had moved into the Brown Mansion. And then, half a year later, she had died as well. Alexander had always thought that there was something fishy about the whole thing. You worthless fool, Simon said, taking a few deep breaths. What are you trying to prove? I knew you weren't here to celebrate my birthday sincerely. Alexander picked up a glass beside him that was full of champagne. He looked at the drink bubbling inside. It was crystal clear. Everyone, raise your glasses with me in a toast to my mother, Alexander said, raising the glass high in the air. Then, he dropped his arm toward Simon, throwing champagne all over him. 
The smell of champagne filled the air as Alexander set the glass back down in its original place. A few drops had splashed onto his leather shoes, but he didn't care. Then, he said to Simon in front of everyone, I did come here to celebrate your birthday. You're one year closer to death, and I can't wait for you to die so that you can pay for your crimes in hell. Simon's expression was cold, but every word that came out of Alexander's mouth felt like it stabbed him through the heart. How dare you, Simon said under his breath. He was so angry that his face was turning red, and he almost couldn't breathe. I brought you this dagger so that you wouldn't forget, Alexander said in a threatening voice. Then, he pulled Samantha's hand and walked down the main hall, heading upstairs. The guests along the way made a path for them, awkwardly avoiding eye contact. They all thought that only Alexander Brown would have the nerve to so openly provoke his father on his birthday. They started whispering to each other, covering their faces to hide their expressions. Now that I think about it, there was something fishy about Mrs. Brown's death back then. Who knows if she committed suicide or if he killed her. The Mitchell family is powerful, but they were too far away to investigate. Can you imagine if he really killed her? What a pity. She was a beautiful woman. Alexander pulled Samantha by the hand as he walked away. She was a half a step behind him. After entering his room, he let go of her hand and she closed the door behind them. He walked straight toward a solid wooden cabinet on his left that was full of red wine. He took out a bottle, opened it, and started drinking. After watching him drink nearly half the bottle, Samantha reached for it, shouting his name. He was a lot taller than she was, so he easily dodged her hand. He turned his back to her and continued drinking. By the time he stopped, he had drunk half the bottle. Alex, what are you doing? Stop it, she said, concerned. He didn't say anything. She could see how miserable he felt. It was as if a dark cloud was hanging over him, and his eyes were filled with despair. She hugged his thin waist and rested her chin on his shoulder, comforting him. When he felt the softness of her body next to his and smelled the sweet scent of her hair, his body relaxed. The heaviness in his heart was gradually replaced by a warm feeling. Alex, you know, if you ever have anything that's upsetting you, you can talk to me, she said, looking up at him. Her voice was soft and gentle. Then she laughed lightly and added, but I don't think you actually would, would you? As she spoke, she took the opportunity to get the bottle of wine out of his hand. She put it back into the cabinet and closed it. The cabinet had a padlock on the outside, so she quickly locked it. She stood in front of it and looked back at him vigilantly. Alexander fixed his eyes on her. He had drunk the wine on an empty stomach, and he quickly felt the effects of the alcohol. She was a little frightened by his unblinking stare. Alex, are you okay? She asked nervously. He leaned against the table beside him and looked down at her. It seemed to her like he was going to fall over. I feel dizzy, he replied, slurring his words. It was only half a bottle, he thought. Why did it hit me so hard? She quickly walked over to support him. Alex, you should be careful with your stomach problems. It's fine if you drink, but you can't drink so quickly and on an empty stomach. Sam, he said, putting his arm around her shoulder and resting all his weight on her. Hmm, she said, holding in her laughter at the sight of him drunk. Are you bored? he asked. She helped him sit down on the bed. When she heard his question, she asked curiously, What? She was quiet for a moment. She thought she understood what he meant. He must just be coming down from all the excitement downstairs, she thought. Alexander was thinking, My whole life is pointless and inane. My mother must have had a dull life if she loved a jerk like my father so much that it cost her her life. I must be bored if I waste my time on the scumbags in my family. I have wealth, status, and power, but I have nothing left to hope for. How utterly boring. He felt numb, as though he couldn't feel anything at all. In fact, he couldn't remember ever feeling anything. He always thought that emotions were unnecessary. Even Missy, the cousin whom he had watched grow up, 
was a bit more important to him than other people, but he still felt quite neutral about her. Were you scared back there? He asked. She thought about it for a while and said, I wasn't scared. She got up and poured him a glass of water, thinking, Why weren't you worried about me getting scared when you pointed your gun at Lorraine? After experiencing something like that, how could I be scared by a little dagger? Alexander drank some water and laid back on the bed, looking at the ceiling blankly. Alex, are you okay? Do you want me to cook you a nice bowl of soup? She asked. The soundproofing at the mansion was very good. She couldn't hear what was going on downstairs at all. She didn't know if Simon's birthday party was still going on after Alexander had made such a scene. On second thought, I probably shouldn't go to the kitchen if everyone's still here, Samantha thought, realizing that it might not have been such a good idea to offer to cook for Alexander. What did you say, Sam? I didn't hear you clearly, he said, slurring his words. He had turned over and was lying flat on his stomach on the bed. He lifted his upper body and gestured for her to come over to him. He was pretty drunk, so Samantha didn't find the way he was acting suspicious. She went around at the other side of the bed and knelt on the edge with one knee. She bent down and patiently repeated in his ear, I said, do you want me to cook you some... Ah! She screamed when Alexander suddenly grabbed her with both hands and rolled over, pulling her on top of him and to the other side of the bed. He kissed her cherry lips while she was in an extremely awkward position on the edge of the bed. She couldn't hold on and almost fell over the side. Alexander pulled her into the center of the bed and held her in his arms. Then he leaned over and kissed her again. Half an hour later, Samantha said, Alex, I don't think you're really drunk. You tricked me. She was breathing heavily partly from kissing him and partly because she was angry. Seeing the playful look in his eyes, she grabbed his cheeks and pulled at them, giving him funny faces. Alexander laughed in a low voice. He was genuinely happy. Sam, I want to take you to a special place tomorrow, he said, holding her in his arms and stroking her face gently. She turned her head away, angry at him once again for tricking her. She didn't want to talk to him or hear about where he wanted to take her. I really must be a fool to feel sorry for this guy, she thought. Why does he make me care about him and want to take care of him? Alexander kissed her softly for a while in silence, and then he continued to speak. I want to take you to see my mother. Your mother? she asked, looking up in surprise. In all the time they had been together, he had never spoken to her about his mother. I thought you weren't talking to me, he said, pinching her nose and raising his eyebrows slightly. She could see a plan unfolding in his eyes. She bit her lips angrily and glared at him, deciding not to speak to him again from that moment on. Maybe it was because of the alcohol, or because the situation was appropriate. Or perhaps it was because he had been holding it inside for too long and needed to release it. But Alexander started to open up about his mother to Samantha. He said, My mother's name was Amelia, and it was said that she was the most beautiful woman in France at one time. Samantha wanted to keep acting angry, but she couldn't. She raised her head and listened to him seriously. She had never seen his mother, but she had heard the name, Amelia Mitchell. She had been a beautiful woman from a prominent family in Europe, and she was internationally famous. Men all over the world had been in love with her. Unfortunately, she didn't have very good taste, Alexander continued. She fell in love with my father. At that time, he was already close to 40 years old, but she loved him deeply. She felt that their love transcended age and was destined to be... But after the wedding, she found out that my father had another love, his first love, that he couldn't let go of. She was Lorraine's mother. Samantha rubbed his back gently to let him know that she was listening. 
Alexander looked down at his hands and kept talking. Simon just married my mother because of her powerful family. He didn't love her. His voice was calm and indifferent, as if he was describing the life of someone he didn't know. He didn't feel anything about it anymore, because he had revisited the pain of it over and over again until it had given way to numbness. What I remember the most is my mother crying almost every day. She did everything she could, in the hopes that her husband would pay her more attention. She asked me over and over again what was wrong with her. She would ask me why Simon didn't like her. She was really naive. Simon never liked her. Samantha's heart ached for Alexander. She remembered that Amelia Mitchell had passed away at a very young age. She had seen pictures of her lavish funeral that had caused quite a stir for its time. She calculated the years. Alex must have been only seven or eight years old at that time, she realized. At that age, he should have been playing with his friends and getting in trouble, she thought. But he must have had to take care of his mother and protect his younger siblings, all while dealing with the coldness and malice from other parts of his family. Alex, Samantha started to say, but she didn't know how to put into words what she was thinking. There are no words that can heal the wounds of such a cruel past, she thought. Later, my mother ended her life with a dagger, like the one you saw downstairs, he said. Then he focused his eyes on Samantha and said in a serious voice, And what do you think happened after that, Samantha? He used her full name to emphasize the importance of what he was about to say. Her heart skipped a beat. She recalled the gossip that she had heard in the past, and also what Alexander had said downstairs about the dagger having taken more than one life. Her memory focused on the ruby dagger that had made Simon's expression change so dramatically. Did your father kill someone else? She asked. Then she thought about it some more and asked, Did he kill Lorraine's mother? She was the one who had really made Amelia feel bad, she thought. And she had been Simon's first love, whom he hadn't forgotten. And Lorraine's mother had died half a year after she had entered the Brown family, she remembered. You're right about half of it, Alexander said. His eyes were slightly smiling because he was proud that she had figured it out, but they also had a coldness to them because of the horrible memory. Lorraine's mother was killed by my father, but I forced him to do it, he said. Samantha widened her eyes in shock. She couldn't believe it. How old would Alex have been at that time, she thought. He must not have been more than ten years old. He was carefully observing her reaction. There was shock and doubt in her eyes, but he didn't see any fear. Sam, aren't you afraid? He asked, lifting her chin and trying to read her eyes. He decided that she wasn't pretending and that her reaction was genuine. I'm not afraid of you, she said, smiling. I don't think you would ever do anything to me. Alex is powerful, but he's actually a little lazy, she thought. He's too lazy to bicker with people over stupid things. He's too lazy to look someone in the eye most of the time. The only people he would attack are those that made him feel really disgusted. In the past, she had been more afraid that her marriage would be exposed. Alexander was in a much better mood. He pulled up the blanket and said, Go to sleep. I'll take you to see my mother tomorrow. Even though Amelia had been dead for many years, she was still his closest and most important family member. Besides Leonard, Samantha was the only other person who had received Alexander's permission to visit her tomb. Back at Simon's birthday banquet, the guests were all talking about the dagger. Friends, friends, I'm deeply sorry that you all had to see that, Simon announced, trying to smooth things over. That son of mine has always had some misunderstandings about the past. This was just his idea of a prank. Everyone, there is still lots of wine and lots of food. Please help yourselves and have a good time. He was a very proud man and didn't want his birthday party to end in a scandal like Brady's engagement party. So he made the announcement and forced the festivities to continue. But the guests weren't fooled. 
They had no problem drinking his liquor and eating his food, but they secretly began to talk about Amelia's death when Simon wasn't looking. Simon asked his assistant to continue hosting the party and gave Albert and Lorraine a knowing look. As he made his way to his study on the second floor, Albert and Lorraine followed discreetly behind him. Once they were out of sight, the guests started focusing their attention on Brady and Lily. Brady was glaring at Lily with pure hatred. When he passed her, he said, I'm going to get you for this. Just you wait. Lily was so scared that her body stiffened, but the feeling quickly passed as she realized something. Oh, Brady, she thought. I'm as miserable as I'm ever going to be. The only thing you could do to me now is take my life. Even that's not worth much to me now. But you've made me very happy today. I couldn't have asked for a better moment, watching you be humiliated like that in front of your whole family. Brady didn't want to stay any longer. Helping Isabel to walk, he went to sit with her in the lounge. No guest would dare to talk to Lily, so she sat off to the side and ate by herself. She overheard people talking about Brady. He isn't even half a man. Well, you can't really blame him. He's the way he is because he's a Jackson. Nothing good has ever come out of that family. That's right. You just can't trust anyone from that family. Lily felt very happy at that moment and was soaking it all in. In the study on the second floor, Simon took out the transfer agreement and threw it in front of Albert, saying, Do you think I can't control you, Albert? Sign it right now, or I'll take away all your shares in the Brown Corporation. Dad, with the Jackson family's current situation, transferring these shares to Lorraine is like trying to fill a bottomless hole. Don't be silly. Albert was so angry that his lips trembled. He hadn't expected things to turn out that way. The Jackson family had ruined their reputation. He couldn't believe that his father still wanted to transfer his shares to his sister. And what exactly is our current situation? Lorraine said, mocking him. Don't you think you've brought this on yourself? Albert, if you hadn't brought Lily here, do you think this would have ended up like this? This is happening because of your bad intentions. Albert was furious. When Lorraine had married into the Jackson family, Simon had wanted her to live a better and more dignified life. So he transferred a quarter of the Browns' shares to the Jacksons, and it was all gone. Dad! Lorraine cried out, wanting him to come to her defense. Simon once again felt his guilt towards his first love and his debt to their daughter. He looked at his son and said, Albert, sign it immediately, and I'll give you 24 hours to resolve what you did here tonight. If the Jacksons are affected by your actions, you will make up for their losses. After the matter was settled, Simon left the study and went downstairs to entertain his guests. After exiting the study, Albert's hands were still trembling with anger. They had been from the moment he had picked up the pen to sign the papers. I'm his son too, he thought, and I've always supported the Browns. Why does that old fool want to humiliate me like this? Albert, don't take it too seriously. It's not worth it, Lorraine said as they walked down the long corridor outside the study. No one was around to hear her comments. You know, your mother only got Dad's attention because of her looks, she said. That's why he doesn't favor you. Why did you come here tonight anyway? You just made a fool of yourself. Albert clenched his fists and tried to hold back his anger. Albert. Do you want to know how your mother died? Lorraine asked. She was upset because of her family's problems, and she wanted to take it out on someone. Albert was the perfect target. Your mother was rude to my mom and wanted to make her go away. Everyone knew that she was just a trophy wife anyway. So I... She trailed off and gave Albert a twisted smile, making wrinkles appear at the corner of her eyes. She paused for a moment and continued... One little push was all it took. She made a pushing gesture with both hands and said, She rolled down the stairs and died. Poor thing. And the child inside her died too. What did you say? He asked, stunned. Then his eyes grew wide with anger. His mother had had a miscarriage when he was just a baby. He had always thought that his mother's death had been an accident. 
All the servants said that she had just lost her footing. He had never imagined that someone else had been responsible. Like I said, your mother wanted to fight for favors and ended up losing her life because of it. Take a lesson from her. Don't delude yourself with things that don't belong to you, Lorraine said, arrogantly pointing her finger at him. Then she raised her chin, pulling her earrings out one at a time, and said, Even if you know the truth now, you'll never be able to do anything to me. Lorraine, Albert said, his eyes full of hatred. Do you really think I can't do anything to you? She sneered at him, and just as she was about to answer, he grabbed her neck with both hands and squeezed her throat with all his strength. She felt a sharp pain in her throat and gasped for breath as the air gradually thinned. She opened her eyes wide in fear and kept struggling. She was surprisingly strong for a woman in her forties and was giving him a good fight. Dad won't let you get away with it, Lorraine said, struggling to speak. Her feet were off the ground, and her attempts to scream were useless. Albert's eyes locked onto the long spiral staircase on his right. There were over forty steps leading down to the first floor, with a wooden protrusion at the end of the rail. Very few people used that staircase, and the housekeepers didn't often clean there. Who can prove it was me? Dead people can't talk, he replied. With those last words, he swung his arms down, and Lorraine's body rolled down the staircase, accompanied by the sound of her scream. That's it for today, guys. If you want to inspire me more, you can buy me a puppy. Thank you for listening.